Poppy's blog. The immortal words of Guelph's John McRae. Now, another memorial. A cup. A battle between Guelph and Ottawa. The OHL Championship Series on Rogers TV. to the Sleeman Center in Guelph, where the Guelph Storm are set to take on the Ottawa 67s, of which could be an OHL championship clinching day for the Guelph Storm. I'm Stephen Simmons, along with Bill Granger, and uh, the uh, excitement is uh, in full force here at the Sleeman Center in Guelph this afternoon. And Bill Granger, when you look at this Ottawa 67s club, they've lost three straight. That hasn't happened this year until now. They have to find a way to get some of the secondary scoring that they're lacking from people like Sam Bitten. Yeah, Sam Bitten is a big body out there for the 67s at 6'2 and 201 pounds. In the regular season in 2018-19, he had 13 goals among 30, his 35 points in 68 games played. But in the 16 playoff games, just one and one for two points. Bitten will center a line with Quinn Ewell on the left side just one point in his playoff season. And Jack Quinn on the right side. Three goals among his six points. Five uh, assists and four uh, goals among the trio for nine points in the postseason. The question is, Steve, how will head coach Andre Turingy use this fourth line this afternoon? The Storm has last change. Will they uh, switch off, the Storm that is, to uh, their, one of their top six forward uh, groupings versus 667's fourth line. But this line can't do the things they're suffering on the on the offensive side because of, I think, less ice time. When we go to the Guelph Storm side of the ledger, Bill, they have been getting that secondary scoring and uh, contributing from people like Liam Howell. Yeah, Liam Howell, uh, an Arn Prior Ontario native, next door to uh, uh, the nation's capital. He was acquired, of course, from the Sioux Greyhounds at, in the uh, 2017 tread, trade deadline. Talk about big bodies. He's one of many out there for the Storm. Six foot four, 195 pounds. Four goals among his 13 uh, points, I should say, in the 23 games played in the postseason. He's on the right side with Nate Starr at center, who has eight goals among his 19 points. And uh, Keegan Stevenson, who's just a ton of energy out there on this line, two goals and two assists for four points. So this, this line's got size. 6'1 is Stevenson, 6'3 is Schnarr, 6'4 is Liam Howell. It's a big, strong, and fast trio. They can cause all sorts of turnovers in the offensive zone and bring the ice, uh, bring the puck up the ice with some, uh, with some authority too. Howell was held pointless in games one and two. His three points since come in the last three games, a goal in two assists. In my opinion, he's due for some big offensive numbers this afternoon. Worth mentioning as well, uh, Michael DiPietro is a healthy scratch, well, unhealthy scratch today. He is not able to play, and Cedric Andre will get the call for the Ottawa 67s, for those that are wondering. We'll send it down to ice level and the on-ice presentation. Levi Tetro for the singing of O Canada.
Another fantastic job with Ocana. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the booth. Game six at the Sleeman Center. The Storm leading the OHL Championship Series three to two. Let's take a look at your starting goaltenders this afternoon, brought to you by Ted's Tire Discounter. Making his fifth game appearance in the postseason is Cedric Andre for the 67s. He sports a 4.62 goals against average and an 85.3 save percentage. Cedric Andre for the 67s. Down at the other end for the Storm, Anthony Popovich. His 24th game appearance in the postseason. His skills against average is 3.13, and he sports an 89.5 save percentage. Anthony Popovich for the Storm. Cedric Andre for the 67s. Your starting goaltenders again brought to you by Ted's Tire Discounter. All right, we're about set here for a puck drop. Game number six. It's going to be a great one. Let's see how this unfolds. Will the J. Robs Robertson Cup be presented today or on Monday? We'll find out soon. Across the line come the Storm. That's Toropchenko. Swipes it in front and Cedric Andre will gather it in. A slow slider right to the top of the crease for Andre. No threat of a goal on that one as it was tipped in by Alexei Toropchenko who's just had a huge series offensively for the Storm. How good has he been? Seven goals here in the series. The league record in the championship series is nine by Jonathan Chichu. Nice. Comes back, Marcus Phillips swipes it back behind the net. That's cut off nicely by Mitchell Holscher, who ties it up there, and now will get it free for Kevin Ball. Ball run into there. Loose puck, Camiso back of the net. Wrap around through the slot, and it goes out to the far corner. It's worked back to the line by the Storm. Gordiev blocked there. Holscher gets it out over the blue line, and here's Maximovich, a lead pass. Chiodo a shot, and coming out to challenge and gloving that one is Anthony Popovich on... A rush by Chiodo. Yeah, Chiodo got in behind the Guelph defense. A little bit of, call it a semi breakaway from the right uh, line as he picked up the pass right at the Guelph blue line. There you have a look, another look at the rush by Chiodo. So the face-off to the left of Anthony Popovich, just 37 seconds in. As Cody Clark will come in and wins the draw back. Picked up by Wilson. He'll cycle it around to the corner. Kept Hanley got a hold of that puck for a moment. And now it's worked out for Nate Schnard. Lead pass, Liam Howell driving up. Back into Schnard, sending it over to the far side. He was looking for Stevenson, and that is broken up, but not cleared as it's fired right on Andre, who steers to the corner. 67s, pick it up. Now it's worked to the near side for Cody Clark, bumped by Lalonde. Puck back in across the line. Schnarr will play it in deep as Andre comes out to leave it there for Merrick Rip. Glad you're along with us, wherever you might be, as Felber sends that wide of the Guelph cage. Sam Rukov pokes it over to the near wall. Felber back down low for Rossi. He tries to find some room. He'll cycle it down for Keating. Working back over to the near boards as Rossi will hustle in again. Shuttle down low, it's cut off there by the Storm's jersey as Enwistle works across to Samarukov. Long shot, knocked down by the pad of Andre. Storm at neutral ice. Dersey will rifle it hard back inside the line. 67s force back, Hoffenmeyer. And that's picked off by Torovchenko. Spins, fires off of Andre. Loose puck. And it comes right to Maximovich. Former Erie Otter shuttles it ahead into Guelph territory. Holscher knocks that one down. Trying to drive against Phillips. Nowhere to go. Ralph comes back. He's bodied. Worked ahead for Torovchenko. He's got it on that right side. Now he turns it back through the middle. And they're going to say he was offside as he touched the puck. Yeah, he came in. It was after him. He was already in the blue line, inside the blue line. Left the puck. Yet had enough momentum to carry inside. He touched it up for the offside. But an earlier play in the Ottawa corner. Down to our right. Toropchenko hurrying in on the forecheck. The Ottawa player knew he was coming. And uh, 
physicality part of Guelph's game. He just gave up the puck behind the net, over behind the net for Torpchenko to pick up. Here is Stevenson moving in, his shot away, and Rondre made the save. Picked up far wall, now outlitted to Bitten, and Hoffenmeyer will step in and scores from long range! Noel Hoffenmeyer opens the scoring from outside the blue line. Long way out, Hoffenmeyer down over the glove of Popovich. The third shot on goal finds the back of the net. How about that? Wow. Hoffenmeyer just looking to clear the puck in, maybe looking for some kind of rebound or... Or that. Or that, I suppose. <laughs> Hoffenmeyer's eighth goal of the postseason. So the pride of the Arizona Coyotes has his Ottawa 67s into a 1-0 lead. Just 2.59 into this first period. A hot check working that ahead. Bounce back into him as he'll play around for Rippon to the far side. Through the middle, Maximovich swings it in. Chioto giving chase, getting there first was Gordiev. Off the glass and out of play, that goes off the stick of Gordiev. Yeah, dissipating start here for the Storm, but sure, good on the 67. On one goal Shoot from anywhere, playoff. here's the Jordan call on the goal. Noel Hoffenmeyer, assist number 13, Sam Bitten, and number 22, Jack Quinn. Time, 2.59. Hoppenmeyer from Bitten and Quinn at 2.59. So Hoffenmeyer from Bitten and Quinn. And so we talked about uh, Bitten in the uh, opening about getting some more secondary scoring. He gets an assist on that one. Well, there you go. Lead pass out for Schnarr. Here comes Stevenson up the left wing side. Low shot. Ricochets into the near corner as Lalonde pinching in. Keeps it down low off the skate of Howell. Now Howell gets it back out to Lalonde and to the point for Hanley. His shot blocked there by Graham Clark, who's taken in by Schnarr. Ball without his stick into the near corner, trying to battle there. And it's skated out by Chemilevsky. Chemilevsky putting on the brakes, tried to get it across for Cody Clark. He does, and that shot is stopped by Anthony Popovich off the stick of Clark. And whistle bumped there as... Cody Clark works back for Fellaber, and it's turned over for Dersey. Gets around one man and clears it in on the backhand. A hot yuck. Play back to the far side. Ty Fellaber, rink wide, near side for Cody Clark. It's picked off there by Suzuki. Rossi trying to get it back as well as Fellaber. Rossi with the puck. Works rink wide. It's picked off by the captain, Isaac Radcliffe. Can't catch up with it. Swept away there before he could get there. Here comes Enwistle. Putting on the brakes, looking for some help. Under siege there from two players. He clears it down low. And Wilson will take over. Hudson Wilson takes over far side. Just inside the blue line. Sam Arukov to the corner for Radcliffe. Tries to drop it there. Looking for Suzuki. It's broken up by the 67s and they will clear it out. Rossi. Across for Keating. Low shot kicked away by Popovich. Rebound in front. Spun back, and that is steered away by the stick of Popovich, and the 67s are going to test him from Ooh. everywhere. And they almost got another one there as Anthony Popovich looking shaky here in the early going. Well, what they're doing is shoot from any angle, any distance out from the uh, Guelph cage. We saw in the first uh, goal, well out at center ice, a long shot eluded Popovich, so they're going to capitalize on any butterflies he may have as a result of that in this crucial game six. So they're firing it with abandon from any section of the ice. Seven shots on goal, one goal among those seven. Gordive for Cedric Guelph. He'll swing it off the glass. And here comes Guelph through the middle. Phillips jumping in there. Trying to drive against Rippon. He is stapled into the boards there. And battle ensues there. And the 67s will pick up the puck. Hoffenmeyer cleared in by Chiodo, Trying to drive wide on Gordive. Picked up by Torabchenko. 
Borobchenko trying to cut to the middle. Continues on there. Can't get past Ball cleanly enough and still muscles his way through to some degree as the 67s get it out to neutral ice. Storm will reset here. This is Lalonde making some changes. And that's deflected off the stick of Ball and out of play. Well, Torepchenko leading the rush to Ball. The ball. The puck bouncing ahead of him. Managed to get it deep. Pursued it. Unable to pick it up in the corner in spite of the little grab on him. No infraction called on the play. But the uh, Storm faithful thought otherwise at the Sleeman Center. We've... Uh, Got 13.59 remaining in the first one, nothing, 67. Ahatiak will come back for it. Lead pass just out of the reach of Chemilevsky as Lalonde comes back for Guelph. Jack Hanley. Picked off by Quinn, he turns it over. Loose puck in the neutral zone. Well, Zach Roberts trying to work it free, and he will for Gogolev, and he'll backhand it in as the Storm will pressure down low. Ahatiak. Collides there with Roberts and now is hit hard by Schnarr and Schnarr's going to draw a penalty there. And the Ottawa 67s will go to the power play. 6.31 into the first and the 67s will get the first opportunity leading 1-0 and they'll look to add to that on the power play right here. So Nate Schnarr heads to the box and the 67s will have a power play opportunity. Just 6.31 into this one. And off the draw. Roll back to Fellaber, now Hoffenmeyer. Far side, Rossi. Back to Hoffenmeyer, and he mishandles that, and he'll have to come back for it. Through Chemilevsky. Looking rink wide for Fellaber, and that bounces wide of the Guelph cage. Hanley back for it, around on the wall. Cut off there by Rossi. Nick Suzuki trying to get a stick on it. Works to the near corner. Fellaber for Keating. Sam Marukov trying to pressure him for the puck. Around to the far side, Rossi waiting for it to come off the edge of the boards. Leaves for Chemilevsky across Fellaber, wrist shot. And that's off the blocking arm of Popovich. Rossi, Chemilevsky swings it back out to the left point for Fellaber. Now Hoffenmeyer, quick shot, going wide. Chopped down and cleared by Guelph. A minute three left in the man advantage. Fellaber over for Chiodo. Chiodo trying to drive in there. Good speed. Continues with the puck, cycling back around to the far side. Cody Clark for Chiodo in front. Chiodo, back door, looking to back in front. Can't bring it out, and it's broken up by Gordiev nicely and clear. Thirty-five seconds left in this man advantage. Cody Clark with the puck. Here's Graham Clark for Maximovich. Back to Cody Clark, dropping there for Chiodo. He got under siege in a hurry there from Camiso and wasn't able to get the puck away. Graham Clark back down low again. It rolls to the near side for Cody Clark. Swings back for Maximovich. Drop pass. Graham Clark out to the line. Ball, a drive, knocked down. Rebound, scores! Right in front, and it is Cody Clark. A power play goal with just one second left at it, and it makes it 2-0. Big start for the 67s in this critical game six. And as you pointed out, a power play goal. This coming at the, with 11.30 left, so 8.30 mark is the time of the goal. And Cody Clark, that's his fifth goal of the OHL playoffs. And a big one it is here to give his team an early 2-0 lead. Off the draw, controlled by the 67s again as they'll roll it in by Quinn. Here comes Guelph Suzuki through the middle. Trying to drive in against Bitten, dropped it there for the captain Radcliffe. Over to Dursey up the right side. 
Trying to find a lane there against Ripon. He works rink wide. Back to Sam Rukoff, the one-timer. And right there in good position is Cedric Andre. Assist number 88, Kevin Ball. And number 92, Graham Clark. Time at 8.30. Ball and Graham Clark with the assist on Cody Clark's goal. Graham Clark at 8.30. Face off deep in Ottawa territory. Worked back to the line for Samer Rukov. Low shot doesn't get through. Broken up and here is Hoffenmeyer. Looking for Keating. Picked off by Jersey and that is stripped away. Puck along the wall. Cleared back into Ottawa territory as they'll take over. And Suzuki gets the puck back. Reed in front looking for Radcliffe to try the redirect, and he just missed. And whistle. Can't get it clean out. And here's Hoffenmeyer for Ottawa. And they're going to call that icing call. At 10.34 left in the first 2 nothing 67s. And we get a chance right here for the Storm as the shot and the failed tip in or redirect by... Radcliffe right in front, narrowly missed it, still 2 0. Face off deep in Ottawa territory as we approach the halfway point of this first period. Ahatiak tying up Howell. Worked back to the line for Lalonde, quickly across for Jack Hanley. Low shot, doesn't get through. Now it's in alone, right in front of the goal for Andre, and he tried to get his glove down on it with a whole crowd to the side of the goal. And Somehow, Ottawa coming away with the puck. Clark in deep again. Mad scramble back in the other zone. Loose puck gathered in. Graham Clark looking back in front for Cody. And it's Wilson on the point who can't keep it in. And Storm try to strip it away. Here is Nate Schnarr with Howell. Two on one. Howell back. And that is deflected nicely by Ahatiak who played well defensively to... Break that one up. And there's an Ottawa player down towards the Storm bench area and trying to scramble to get off, that being Graham or Cody Clark as Toropchenko in deep now. Tied up there by Perrick. Loose puck. 67s trying to clear the zone. And it's carried out by Holscher. He gives to Chiodo. Return feed off the skate of Holscher. Toropchenko will... Backhanded out to neutralize to relieve some pressure. And that'll be cleared down the ice for an icing call against the 67s. So we'll take a break with that. And at the Good halfway point of this first period, it's the Ottawa 67s to the Guelph Storm. No score. You're watching Guelph Storm Hockey on Rogers TV. Brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. We're in section 102 with Deb. The lucky contestant who will play for a $50 gift card to Spike. Sleeman Center in Guelph, where the Ottawa 67s have a 2 0 first period lead. I'm Stephen Simmons, along with Bill Granger and Trevor Pryor. We're glad you're along with us on Rogers TV and the OHL Action Pack. Radcliffe working down for Suzuki. Tied up there, and whistle against Perrick. Puck rolls free for Maximovich. Plays it past Samarukov, picking it up there against Dursey. Maximovich trying to drive in front, and it was taken away at the last moment. And whistle for Guelph. Works back to the right side for Radcliffe. Storm captain sends it past Suzuki, and that'll force the Storm all the way back down. Dursey for Suzuki. Drops for Radcliffe. Wrist shot wide. Picked up by Hoffenmeyer now. Worked across. Left wing for Keating. Through the middle. Off Rossi's stick. Here's Felliber. Back to Rossi. His shot off the arm of Popovich. Rebound. And it comes out to the left point for Ahatiak. Now picked off by Guelph. Here comes Enwistle. He has Radcliffe cutting to the middle. And it's taken away. Good defensive play there. That by Kevin Ball. Ahatiak through the middle. Here's Schnarr finding an open lane. Got the shot away. Save was made. 
And it's picked off and cleared by the 67s. Here's Chemilevsky cutting to the middle. 67s changing here. Nate Schnarr, rink wide, looking for Stevenson. Played to the corner by Cedric Andre. Rolled into Guelph territory. It'll come right to Anthony Popovich. Or just wide of him. Storm on the puck. Hanley. Here's Stevenson, left wing side. Gives to Howell. Tried to drop it back. Taken in hard by Rippon. And it's picked off by Shemilevsky. Graham Clark took the shot from a bit of long range, but they've had luck with that. But this time, Anthony Popovich looks solid on it. Here's Nate Schnarr with a Guelph Storm opportunity as he finds himself in a great position with the puck still at the top or inside the circle. Gets a shot away blocker saved by Andre to keep it at 2 0. left here in this first period. Controlled off the draw, Torobchenko out to neutral ice. Ahatyuk there. Swings it in on the backhand as Phillips comes back for Guelph. Played around on the wall, out to neutral ice, and here comes Guelph. Cedric Ralph with Camiso, two on one. Ralph moving in, puts on the pause, shot it in front, save made, rebound in through the slot, and Ottawa comes up with the puck. Yep, penalty checking from behind right there. And the Ottawa 67s will go to the box. Hoffenmeyer. Well, here's one of the few good scoring opportunities for this storm by Cedric Ralph. Two on one as he broke in with Dom Camiso. Got in a little bit too deep. Good coverage to take away the pass. So he was looking initially to pass to Camiso. And uh, well played two on one, leaving the shooter to uh, be handled by Andre and he got way down low away from a good shooting Ottawa opportunity. Ottawa penalty number two, Noel Hoppenmeyer. Two minutes Storm for on the boarding. power play, Jersey. Nine, three, three, 13, Cross for Samaruka. Hoppenmeyer boarding. 13, His long 21. shot misses the mark there. It rattles out to Jersey on the point. Round for Schnarr. Picked off by Wilson. He's tied up in there by Schnarr and now Suzuki will try to dig it free. Radcliffe in there as well. 67's killing off some valuable time there. It's finally rolled three. Jersey back out right point. Back to Samarukov. Return feed to Jersey. Top of the circle. Cruising in. Shot it just wide on the glove side. Suzuki cycling back behind the net for Schnarr. Back out to Suzuki. Samarukov on the point. Return to Suzuki. Samarukov a shot. And that hit Schnarr in front with his own teammate shot. And Schnarr is down and in considerable pain and they'll whistle it down as a result of that yes the official right there to check in on his status and he know he's in some critical pain Schnarr a valuable part of this well storm team absolutely a huge part of this hockey club you don't want to be on the other end of uh, the shot of Sumerukov as he was. And he's uh, skate that one off. As you were wont to say, skate it off, you know, skate, skate it, it off. off, you know, yeah, you bet. That's a story from the 1950s when Eddie Bush, former Detroit Red Wing, was coaching the Guelph Dotmar Mad Hatters, and there was a Fellow from Alora, Ontario, just north of Guelph, Eno Carl Kraft. And he took one in Hamilton. Stick the puck right off the nose and sent it over onto the part of his cheek. <laughs> He's bleeding profusely. And Eddie yelled out onto the ice, skate it off, Eno, skate it off. <laughs> These hockey players are tough customers, they are. I tell you. Samarukov for Dersey. 52 seconds left in this man advantage for Guelph. Kevin Ball takes over. He'll roll it in deep to Guelph territory. Samarukov for Guelph. Up for Suzuki. Works back for Samarukov. Over to Dersey. And that's taken away here 
And it's Chemilevsky with Maximovich, two on two. Chemilevsky, high slot, got the shot away, loose puck there, and clamping down on it for a moment was Popovich and left it for the Storm. Here's Enwistle back for Gual, 15 seconds, driving wide, finding some room, got the shot away, closing the door with the pads was Andre. As he tried to go five hole with that one. And the 67s will kill that one off with 4.37 to go here in this first period. Rolled out for Camiso. Cross Hanley. Trying to get in there against Kevin Ball. Ridden off. The puck rolls free right to Cedric Andre, and he'll put the glove it's on. Time for the yeah, big penalty kill for the uh, 67s Fox as they cool the defend this. The official Two nothing lead in the first the period by goals by Hoffenmeyer Who do we have and on the power the play Cody Clark. And that 30. smile looks like it was pre-ordered. There you go. Missing two at all. Coming up in the first intermission, life. Sam There's Bitten of the Ottawa 67s game. will be along to chat with Trevor. And another special guest as well. Coming up, Trevor will have that for you in just 417. As Torobchenko trying to cycle it back. Samarukov glances off of Felibert into the Ottawa bench area. Well, nice to see on the road down in Ottawa, cello houses and same here in 12th in this OHL Championship Series. Well, if you can't sell out the OHL final, then when can you? That's right. But yeah, tremendous fan support for both of these clubs. Schnarr back out there, that's a good sign. Waved out in favor of Howell. That means Shemilevsky. Off the drop back for Lalonde. Trying to get in against Graham Clark. Plays behind the net for Liam Howell. Trying to leave it there for Schnarr, and that'll Penalty be coming here. Who's yep. this going to? It's going to be a high stick. That may be to Guelph as well. It's to Schnarr. And Schnarr goes off for his second penalty. So with 3:59 left here in this first period, the Ottawa 67s will have a, another opportunity on the power play. 16:01, the time of this penalty to Schnarr. And the second opportunity with the extra man for the 67s. One for one they are in that department. Their second goal off the stick of Cody Clark with the extra man. Well, Billy, number 16, off the drop rolls free for Sam Arukov. Snar, high Off and Meyer back, gives to Keating. Over for Rossi. Storm strip it away. That's Camiso. Hoffenmeyer for Keating. The Guelph native drops for Felber. Back to the far side. Rossi. Hoffenmeyer on the point. Return feed to Rossi. Now Chemilevsky. Feathered in there. Keating trying to drop it back. Hoffenmeyer. The shot blocked by Suzuki. Hoffenmeyer again. Felibur in the corner, and that's deflected by a Guelph stick all the way down the ice. Chemilevsky back. Turns the puck over. Radcliffe shorthanded. Can't get in there against Kevin Ball. Felibur for Ottawa. Trying to find some open room out there as he circles back. Now through the middle. And across the line. Forced back, and he gives it to Graham Clark. Ball. Takes a look. Feathers back there for Cody Clark. He has a goal here in this first period. Works across. Nice pass. Chiodo out for Maximovich. Blocked by Radcliffe. That's a storm captain. Stops that one. Chiodo again. Maximovich. Head back, Chiodo. In for Graham Clark, and he fired it wide. Storm on the puck, trying to clear, and it's roll pass ball by Enwistle. Ten seconds left in this man advantage. Kevin Ball. Out for Maximovich. 
rink wide looking for Chiodo. Samarukov takes over. The Storm back to full strength. Schnarr for Cedric Ralph. Taken off the puck. Picked up by Holscher. The Alora native works to the right side for Quinn. Quinn plays back down low, but right to Samarukov. Looks across there for Hanley. Storm on the breakout. Here's Camiso in, hustling after it. And they're going to whistle it down on an icing call, a late one it is. And the crowd voicing their displeasure. It took them a while to decide on that. Well, Camiso down low on it, but uh, it got ahead of them, and the 67's right there to pick it up. So if it was in a position for Camiso to touch it up, it would be waved off. Not so as the 67's gain possession. So face off deep in Guelph territory, 129 to play here in this first period. Draw, Samar Rukov tying up Bitten. Loose puck in the corner, Holscher in there against Camiso. Battling hard for it. Samar Rukov emerges with the puck, he'll just lift it on the backhand down the ice. And icing's waved off this time as Hoffenmeyer trying to work it out. Kept in by Marcus Phillips for Guelph. Sends it towards the net, blocked. Phillips behind the net. Steered back through the slot. Play delayed penalty series, coming here to Ottawa. Torovchenko on the puck for Guelph. And that'll be touched up with 53.6 seconds left. Guelph will have a power play. That pressure on down low gets the uh, penalty to the 67s. And this coming with 53.6 seconds left. And it's a slashing call. to the 67s, and it's Holscher. So Guelph would like nothing more than to get one on the board be here for the Ottawa end of the period. 17, Mitchell Holscher, two minutes that. for slashing time, 1906. Holscher, slashing, 1906. Sam Marukov comes back for for Guelph. Rolled out for Dersey. Played in deep. Swung around by Radcliffe over for Suzuki, and Sam Rukov couldn't keep it in on the point. Sam Rukov. Working in there, Radcliffe. Picked off by Ball, took a hit to do it. Here's Rossi. Rossi in across the line, whistled down. Some wow. jawing going on behind the play with Rippon and Samarukov. Yeah, Sumaraku, Samarukov took the hit in the corner and had some uh, extracurriculars going on. The referee right there to settle them down as best he could. Ten and a half seconds left. Two nothing Ottawa in a pretty nice period for them on the road in game six. That's been a text, textbook uh, road period for the Ottawa 67s, exactly what they were looking to do. Strike first, have a couple goal lead after one. As the seconds tick down on this first period, and that will bring it to a close. And the Ottawa 67s came out and accomplished exactly what they were looking to do in the first. Yeah, 13 to 12, the shots on goal favoring, favoring them as well, but uh, more importantly, is that 2 nothing lead on the scoreboard after 20. Hoffenmeyer, Cody Clark with the goals in that first period. These shots on goal brought to you by GuelphStorm.com. They favored the Ottawa 67s 13 to 12 in that first period. And as you said, more importantly, it's a 2 nothing lead. Coming up in the first intermission, Sam Bitten of the Ottawa 67s will be along. And Guelph Storm alumni and former NHL Shots player Brian Wilsey will join Trevor Pryor as Guelph well. Mercury At the end of one, it's the Ottawa 67s to the Guelph Storm, no necessary score. Necessary You're watching Guelph Storm Hockey on Rogers TV, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Hawks. Ottawa will be tomorrow night in Ottawa, 7 p.m.
Yeah, we had no panic there. Uh, you know, they've been in this position before, and we know they're a really strong team, and they're capable of coming back and lead. So uh, we just knew we had to. We just want to focus on that first period, like we did, and uh, you know, shoot more. In the last couple of games, I think we had 12, less than 12 shots after two periods. So we knew we had to get shots through, and uh, yeah, come out hard and focus on that first. You know, a unique situation for you guys, obviously, backs against the wall uh, after sort of running through the Eastern Conference. Um, you know, I, I caught you guys going on to the ice before the game. It seemed pretty positive, upbeat. Uh, maybe just message amongst the guys before the game here tonight. Yeah, I mean, our leaders did a great job all year of talking and, uh, you know, Sasha, you know, one of our captains had a great speech before the game and, and we don't want to let this year end. I mean, uh, for us, we're fighting for our lives out here and, and we're, you know, we, didn't, we weren't nervous, we were a confident group and we are just really excited to go out, out here and play and, and that's what we did out there. You know, Sam, just a quick thought because we don't see you guys very often. You, you're from Gloucester, got a chance to play in front of uh, your hometown for all these years. Just thoughts on that? Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, I'm really fortunate to get to play in my hometown and live at home with my mom and dad. And, uh, you know, that was a big thing. I, I didn't know really what to expect when I came to the OHL and I because I, I saw my brother go through it and he never got to play at home. But uh, for me, like I said, I'm really fortunate and get to play in front of my family and friends every other night. And, uh, yeah, I've been blessed. Thanks, Sam. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Sam Benton for the Ottawa 67s. Stay with us. we got more of the first intermission coming up. It's Gulf Storm Hockey on Rogers TV, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. Well, welcome back to the Sleeman Center here in the first intermission. Joining me now, a very special guest, Former member of the Guelph Storm in 1998, Brian Wilsey, longtime pro career. Brian, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, what a day here today at the Sleeman Center. Um, hard to believe 21 years ago, your team went through this uh, process. Um, let's take us back. I mean, I'm sure you have some good memories from that year. Yeah, it doesn't seem like 21 years ago, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it was an exciting time for us. You know, you're just a bunch of kids. Um, but uh, Memorial Gardens, uh, the city really came behind us. And, uh, and, uh, and again, uh, this playoff run, uh, really supports their junior team, which is which is great to be around. I've made it out to a few playoff games uh, with this group, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem that long ago uh, at all. You know, if, if this team can pull it off, I mean, the storyline will be coming down 3 nothing from London, 3-1 to Saginaw. Maybe what kind of adversity or what did you guys recall going through in 98? I'm sure it wasn't a, an easiest road to win. Yeah, we, we spoke that, about that quite a bit, and I have with George a little bit, and honestly, they, they were really different. Uh, we were maybe more similar to the to the Ottawa team. We, we, uh, we had a uh, only maybe two trades the whole season. Uh, uh, we really uh, uh, did well throughout the first three rounds and, and led all the series. We had one big loss in the in the finals against Ottawa, but other than that, we uh, we were uh, a resilient group. But we didn't uh, uh, get a lot of adversity throughout the playoffs, which was uh, which was great. We stayed healthy, which is very important. But uh, we had George leading us in, and he's lead, uh, leading them now and doing a great job. So hopefully, he can do it again. It's always funny how the hockey storylines work. You guys played Ottawa, and George Burnett was your coach. Uh, what was George like for you guys? George, uh, you know, he came in. Uh, we had E.J. McGuire the two previous years, and, and Mike Kelly uh, uh, had brought that group together. Um, but George, uh, you know, he steered the ship. We, we had a great leader, uh, a great group of leaders, uh, Chris Seid, Andrew Long, Jason Jackman, uh, Manny Maholcha, Chris Madden. Um, that's uh, re really uh, brought us together. But George just steered us, and, and he knew what to say at the right times and, uh, and got us over the hump. You know, you had a long pro career, many NHL games, uh, trips to Europe. Uh, you were only playing a few years ago, pretty much. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of good friends from all those teams, but I, just because I, I know a little personally about you and your friends is that uh, you got a, a group from that team that you're so close with and, and you all kind of stayed local as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, you, uh, when you win together, it really brings you together. And, and uh, uh, George and I talked about that. You know, you, you don't know when you'll get the chance to win again. And uh, I never did. You know, I played 17 years and it never came again. So it was pretty cool. And I stayed close to all those guys and, and the coaches and the trainers that you see here uh, walking around here. It's, uh, it's, it was a pretty cool uh, city to be drafted to. Uh, made my home here now, raised my family. And uh, it's uh, pretty awesome to still have those long friends. And uh, stay in the game. I, mean, the I know the next chapter for you with the Colorado Avalanche and player development. Uh, just to maybe speak, uh, obviously a tough loss the other night, but a, a good run for your young team. Um, maybe talk a little bit about that chapter in your life now and the role it uh, serves for you. Uh, I was very fortunate just to go right from playing into it. Um, I do player development for the Avalanche, so I'm working with all their uh, drafted players, whether it be junior or Europe or uh, NCAA, and kind of uh, develop them, mentor them, trying to 
uh, get over the hump and, and into pro hockey and then from minor pro into the NHL. So it's, uh, it's a really rewarding job. Um, uh, a little bit of travel around to see the players, but uh, you know, organization from 48 points a few years ago to, to what we've just done the last uh, few weeks here is uh, it's pretty exciting for us. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to the draft and then moving forward with the young group we have. All right, well, they're down two here today. What do you make uh, the comeback? <laughs> Be another comeback, this one within a game. Yeah, exactly. Nothing surprised me this group, and uh, I think they just got to relax. They're a little uptight. A lot of distractions in a game like this and a clinching game, so I think we'll see a uh, more relaxed and a veteran team come on in the next two periods. Ryan, thanks for doing this. Great catching up. All right, you too. Thanks, Trevor. Stay with us. Back with more of the first intermission. It's Gulf Storm Hockey on Rogers TV, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. Everybody, welcome back to the Sleeman Center in Guelph for Game Six of the Ontario Hockey League Championship Series between the host Guelph Storm and the visiting Ottawa 67s. And after 20, there you see the story: two nothing 67s, Hoffenmeyer and Clark with the goals, and the 67s outshoot the Storm by a slim margin of 13 to 12. But more importantly, two nothing on the board and lots of action. Here you see Nick Suzuki swinging around and that puck just narrowly tipped by Isaac Ratcliffe and then Schnarr with a great opportunity, blocker saved. And then uh, Ralph in close, <laughs> ran out of opportunities in space and uh, it was uh, turned aside. And there is the uh, hit checking from behind on Schnarr. And Schnarr, that uh, led to uh, an opportunity with the extra man, but there's the goal. A long shot by Hoppenmeyer to open up the scoring. And this one, too, a rebound in front, banged home by Cody Clark, his fifth from Ball and Clark, Graham Clark, on the power play at 8.30 of the first period. 2-0. The visitors over the hosts at the end of 20 minutes. So you're watching Guelph Storm Hockey and Rogers TV, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. Welcome back to the Sleeman Center in Guelph. We're at the end of one period of play. The Ottawa 67s have a two to nothing lead on the road here at the Sleeman Center. I'm Steve Fitzsimmons on Bill Granger as you get a look at Anthony Popovich hoping for some more consistency than he had in that first period. Well, it'll be a different team coming out in the second period. Hope the Guelph Storm fans. I thought they were a little uptight in the opening period. Never got the flow going that we were accustomed to seeing, but uh, they'll adjust in that first intermission, I'm sure, and come out and uh, a little more compete in them and uh, make some adjustments against this uh, high-flying 67s club in that opening period. And the winner of this series will go to Halifax, where the Halifax Mooseheads, the host team, will be there against the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League champions, the Rouen Miranda Huskies. While out west, it's the PA Raiders leading 3-2, I believe, over the Vancouver Giants in their series, looking for a right to go to Halifax for the Memorial Cup. Just a reminder, there's a minute seven left in the penalty to Mitchell Holscher that carries over, so Guelph will start the period on the power play. Officials having a word at the penalty box area just for a moment. Not sure what that pertains to. Well, Andre Turingy called the official over when he was ready to drop the puck for a little con flab, and we'll see what that's about. And it may be about the penalty time, when the penalty was called, and how much time is on the penalty clock remaining. It says 107. And I'm sure he's say, saying it should be more like 52. <laughs> yeah, it could be. And there you see the OHL Coach of the Year, Andre Turney. And well deserved it was for him. Phenomenal year for the Ottawa 67s. If they look to continue that.
And we know we have a big audience watching all across the province. We want to welcome all of you. Glad you're along with us here this afternoon. So we're underway with second period action as that is cleared in off the faceoff by Rippon as the storm will start from their zone. Samarukov. Out across for Jersey. Left there for the captain, Radcliffe. Back to Samarukov. Enters the zone. Wrist shot over top of the net. Bouncing puck. Samarukov sends it back over top of the net with his shot there as Radcliffe keeps it in the point. Here's Jersey. Low shot blocked by Keating. Rolls to the corner. Schnarr taken in there by Rippon. Wilson trying to knock it free there as well. Suzuki coming in also. Roll back to the point for Dersey. Samarukov, return feed to Dersey. They exchange positions. Back to Samarukov. Quick shot scores! Dmitry Samarukov with blast from the point. Power play goal, 2-1. Dmitry Samarukov with a cannon from the point in the back of the net in a hurry for his night of the uh, postseason. His hot streak from the back end continues. He gets his mates on the board. On the power play, just 59, 6, 59, 51 seconds into the second period. A big marker for the score. So Sam Arukov has narrowed the gap here with a power play goal to make it 2-1 in the opening minute of the second period. Hoffenmeyer for Ottawa. Roll through as Cody Clark kind of catch up with it there. Takes in his man. And down there is Howell as Cody Clark falls on top of him and trying to get hostilities under control there for a moment. Well, the Guelph player took a, a couple of beatings. First on the hit on the half wall, and then as uh, his mates came in to uh, retaliate, more or less, there's the initial hit. Guelph squashed his head up against it, and then uh, the takes his man five. down right on top of him. Dimitri. So, uh, well, not quite on top of him. But Phillips was still feeling the effects of getting his uh, head caught between Sean the player Dersey. and the boards and on the half wall. Isaac Ratcliffe. Time 51 seconds. On the power play, Samarukov from Jersey and Ratcliffe at 51 Dersey seconds. Jersey and Ratcliffe with the assists on that goal. The ninth of the postseason by Samarukov at 51 seconds. So face off just outside the Guelph blue line. Ottawa, a hot yuck. Long shot wide of the Guelph cage. Here's Chioto cycling, but picked off by Lalonde. Jack Hanley works ahead for Cedric Ralph. Trying to get it out, he will. Bouncing puck through the middle. Here's Chiodo. Turned over to Guelph. Ahatya keeping it in for the 67s. Back around on the near wall. Out it comes. Cedric Ralph trying to bust past Wilson. Can't do it. Hanley back for Guelph. Under pressure from Chiodo. Now over to Lalonde as Chiodo will take the puck away from him. Leaves it there for Holscher. There's a shot. Save made coming across was Popovich off of Kyle Maximovich. This is a distinct uh, difference in this game six, in the game plan of the 67s. A good four check forces the Storm to eat the puck along the, the wall. They outman the Storm along the wall, get possession, and a shot on goal. And that's a distinct big difference thus far in the hockey game from this vantage point. Clean win by the 67s. Long shot just wide by Kevin Ball. Here's Hoffenmeyer. His shot wide of the blocker side. And it's picked off and cleared down the ice. Here's Radcliffe. He'll roll it back for Dersey. Return feed. Here's Guelph on the breakout. Quickly across for Samarukov. And that is swept away and cleared out for Keating. Can't get past Dersey there. Samarukov, four end whistle. Back across Suzuki. Guelph in across the line. 
Rolled over, looking for end whistle, bounced over his stick. And that'll be picked up by Ahatyuk. Turned over to Guelph. Here comes end whistle. Bumped there by Ahatyuk and ripping his back for it. Keating far side as Radcliffe gathers it in at neutral ice. Storm making changes. Ripping on the puck for Ottawa. Chipped in by Rossi. He wants to get off and he will. Shemolevsky keeps it in on the point. Worked across, bounced away in front of the Storm net and out to neutral ice. Bitten, tied up. Here's Gordiev jumping into the rush for Guelph. Long shot scooped up by the glove of Cedric Andre. Got no rebound on that shot. There's been ample juicy rebounds as you describe it, Steve, given up by Andre, but none on that glove save. And the faceoff will come to his right. We play three. 12 in this uh, first, second period of play. And on the power play, Dmitry Suk Samarukov cut the margin in half just 51 seconds in on the power play. His night. Over $5,000. So face off deep in Ottawa territory. Three and change into the second period. Miso wins the draw back to Phillips. That's Gogolev moving in. Gogolev, a wrist shot deflected out of the play off the stick of Hoffenmeyer. Well, a good uh, whistle at that time as Chemileski broke his stick and he left the zone to go to the bench to pick up his uh, new twig. And uh, fortunately for the 67s, they would have been down a man, essentially, with the puck deep in their own end zone. So face-off will be deep in Ottawa territory. Fourteen shots apiece. Ottawa with a two-to-one lead. Gogolov back to the point. Marcus Phillips, a low shot, redirected just wide. Close call there for Camiso, and it's whistled down, knocked down by a high stick, and it'll be brought outside the Ottawa zone. Yeah, off Robert's stick, and uh, alert call by the official there to bring the face-off outside. There was a this exchange between one of the officials and the head coach of the 67s. Not sure what it was. It might have been a complaint that the broken stick up by on Chemilevsky was an uncalled slash. So well, that's my uh, possible view on that one. Rifled in there by Lalonde. Ralph at the half wall, leaving it there for Camiso. Swings it out in front, Torpchenko goes short side and hit the mesh on the outside of the net. He still has it, trying to work away there, and it's picked off by Chiodo, and here they come. Brought in across the line, Holscher, low shot, drifts wide of the Guelph cage. And Stormer on it, here's Camiso. Long shot kicked away to the corner by Andre. Ahatyuk. Rank wide out of the reach of Chiodo. And that'll be an icing call against the 67s as a result. Wow, we're winding down to Memorial Cup time. And the Memorial Cup time is not only to celebrate junior hockey in the, the country, but we also take time to honor our veterans. And I'll tell you one veteran who doesn't get my appreciation too often, and, it sh and he should, a 23-year 20 veteran of the RCAF, my brother, the resident of Ottawa. Well, there you go. So thanks for your service, Dave. Keating worked out for Felliber. Trying to drive in there. Loose puck in front. Nice pad save there on the back end. Right in front, and that is cleared wide. My goodness, by Ty Felliber. He doesn't miss many like that. Well, thank you. hit the post. The official waved it off. And whistle around to the far side. Radcliffe bouncing puck out to center. Keating trying to settle it down. Rolled back in by Suzuki. My goodness, close call there for the 67. Jersey muscles it past Hoffenmeyer as Ball gets back and gets it, but it's taken away from him as he's fell down. Out to the far side. Long shot by Radcliffe, blocked by Ball. And whistle in the corner against Hoffenmeyer. 
Now Suzuki out to Samarukov on the right point. His tr shot drifts right oh, off wow. the pad of Andre, and he scoops it up as the carom came back on the rebound. Yeah, that, that was a redirect in front. Not sure who it hit, but uh, alert reaction by Andre for the save. As you see, the 67's coming down. This is this close one. Right open net for Feliber. Didn't find the back end, but uh, close call on either case. Schnarr waved out in favor of Howell. Loose puck off the draw, gathered in by Chemileski, who plays to Wilson. Around for Cody Clark, or Graham Clark, pardon me. He has it near side. Brought in across the line. Ahatyuk, and that is gathered in by Anthony Popovich, who has looked much more solid here in the second period. Yes, sir, and uh, I'm sure things will tighten up as far as uh, open end-to-end -end rushes. 13-12 to 12 were the shots in the first period of play, favoring the 67s. Two shots for them, five for the Storm thus far in the second period. Over to the near side. Cody Clark sending it back around. Jemilewski. Graham Clark in there as Gordiev will pick it up for Guelph. Trying to get it to Stevenson. Storm chip it out. Coming back for it is Wilson. Hit by Howell. Loose puck down low. Back out to Stevenson. Good save made by Cedric Andre. Point blank opportunity there for Stevenson. Well, Cedric Andre back in his crease, so lots of net to shoot at and a good position there for Stevenson, and he found the logo of Cedric Andre for the save. Fourteen oh four left in the second period. Guelph with the only goal of the frame after trailing 2-0 to the 67s after 20 minutes. Off the draw, controlled by the Storm. Fired in by Lalonde. Here's Camiso, leaves for Toropchenko, trying to muscle it towards the net. As Hanley comes in to keep it in deep, and now he's stripped away from him. Here's Chiodo. Coming in on the right side, looking across, got the shot away, and a rebound is hits the post, and here's another opportunity down low for Maximovich, who leaves for Chiodo, but a close call for the Ottawa 67s. Back to the line it goes, Rippin. Low shot, doesn't get through. Bouncing puck, Maximovich. Trying to work it back in front. Tied in there by Hanley. Lalonde, bouncing puck, and that pinball's through the slot. Stormer on it though. Ralph for Toropchenko. Putting on the brakes, tried to work it across. That's picked off by Maximovich. Camiso for Guelph. What a playoffs he's had as he sends it back in there for a Lalonde. Lead pass, Isaac Radcliffe. Couldn't get it past Hoffenmeyer. Here's Radcliffe down low. Battling with Chemilevsky. He continues on with the puck out to Samarukov on the point. In deep. Here's Suzuki. Bouncing puck in the corner. Rolls to Rippin. Out to Samarukov. Drifts into the corner as Suzuki plays around to Enwistle far side. Tied up over there by Sam Bitten. Loose puck gathered in by Radcliffe, scores! Isaac Radcliffe ties the game! Call him Captain Clutch. He's got his team tied up here. Isaac Radcliffe for the storm. As you said, the captain, he scores his 14th of the postseason to tie this hockey game up. 
And what a nice toe drag he performed right there to get the extra time and space to bury it for the tire. So Isaac Radcliffe, uh, the officials conferring, but uh, we'll wait and see. Looked like a good goal. Well, we're going to wait as they review it. And now they say we're good to go. So it is a goal 2-2. Two -two. And it's just a matter of process, I would imagine, here at this point to quickly take a look at each goal. As Howell sends back out to Jersey. There's a shot, drifts in, and Andre with the glove save. Yeah, Andre right out beyond the blue ice, cutting down the angle and getting Low a better angle on the shot. Here's the, the call on the Radcliffe by goal. 19, Isaac! Assist number 10, Mackenzie Enwistle. Time 7.46. Ratcliffe from Enwistle at 7.46. Bone assist going to Mackenzie Enwistle. Feliber to the far side now. Picked off by Sam Rukoff. Back in across the line. Drops for Radcliffe. Cutting the middle of the whistle and down. Well, Sam Rukov didn't think it was offside, and uh, we may get a second look at it here. If we do, it'll fall under the category of you be the judge. Take a look at this one. That's the end zone view of it. It might have been on the far side, up just offside. Anyway, as we say, drop the puck and forget about it. You got it. <laughs> So it's cleared in by Lalonde for Guelph as Chiodo tying up Ralph trying to get to it. Paul sure pokes it free for Rippin. Rippin will lead the rush and dish up the left wing. Lance off the Ooh. stick of Maximovich. A hard hit over there as Lalonde took one. Rippin. Torobchenko trying to hustle in against Mahatyak. Left it there. Holscher picks it up for Ottawa. Late pass up the right wing, cutting to the middle. Chioto with good speed. Chioto drops it. Long shot. Maximovich floats to the corner. And Maximovich on the puck again. Low shot. Blocked through traffic by Lalani. Outlets to Cedric Ralph. He'll just roll it in as the storm will make wholesale changes. Approaching the halfway point of the second period. Guelph 2, Ottawa 2. Well, that was a generous uh, wave off there because it was shot. It did not touch, in my opinion, the Ottawa player on this side. Here's Cody Clark for Ottawa. Back to the line. Trying to get that one through is Hudson Wilson. In the corner, they joust for it. Deep in Guelph territory. Five players converge. It finally comes free, and it'll roll out to neutral ice and Wilson will come back for Ottawa. Hoffenmeyer trying to settle it down. Here's Stevenson for Guelph. Pokes it over for Enwistle. Trying to settle it down cleanly. Couldn't get anything on that. And Graham Clark will take over and roll it out for Ottawa. Here's Graham Clark with Chemilevsky and Cody Clark. Tried to send it over. Nice poke check by Marcus Phillips to break that up. Kevin Ball back for the 67s. Past the halfway point of the second period. We got a good one going here from Guelph. Feliber. Couldn't good. get that broken up by Suzuki. Yeah, good back check and good stick by Suzuki. Loose puck rattles down for Samer Rukov. He'll send it around on the wall looking for Radcliffe. He'll play it past his man. Here's Suzuki. He has Enwistle with him. Two on two. Rink wide for Dersey jumping in. Ball took care of that. But Enwistle gets the puck back out front and was looking for Radcliffe and he couldn't find it with his stick as he was under some pressure hustling in there. Suzuki around to Radcliffe. Keating at the half wall. Has it taken away by Radcliffe but he turns the puck over. Now gets it back. Ahatyuk steers to the near corner but Suzuki is there. Suzuki across. 
Jersey pinching in, shot knocked down by Andre, rebound. It's gathered up by Guelph, they'll keep it in. Suzuki around, Torobchenko. Now Samarukov pinching in against Feliber. Drop to the point for Dersey. Backhanded off the glass, Camiso behind the net. Trying to center in front, looking for some help. He'll fire it over top of the shoulder of Andre. And out of play it went, and with that, we'll take a break. We've got a barn burner happening from Guelph. It's 2-2 midway through the second. You're watching Guelph Storm Hockey on Rogers TV, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. with Stephanie, and all you have to do is watch the Timbit skate into the Tim Hortons Cup. And once they stop moving, tell me if the Timbit is in the hot chocolate, the dark roast, or the original. Welcome back to the Sleeman Center in Guelph, where the Guelph Storm and Ottawa 67s are deadlocked at two apiece. I'm Steve and Simmons, along with Bill Granger and Trevor Pryor. We're glad you're along with us on Rogers TV, the OHL Action Pack, and oh. various other outlets, we understand. A different second period for the Guelph Storm as they trail 2-0. After a little shaky first period of play, they scored the only two goals of the period here to tie the game at a pair each. Ottawa 67s, that's Holscher for Chiodo. And across the Guelph line, back to Holscher in the slot, had it tripped away, and Torobchenko clears the zone. Chiodo back towards the Storm blue line. Maximovich eludes a check and he'll work it back for Rippin. Camiso trying to work it free. Rippin clears down the ice. An icing call is made. Well, Torpchenko made a move at the red line to get it by the defender. I think it was Hoffenmeyer, and he went to get around him, and he got a little tug from behind. It took him to his knees. No call on the play, but it raised the ire of the Storm faithful here at the Sleeman Center. Face off deep in Ottawa territory. Storm win the draw. Kept in there by Marcus Phillips. Over the half wall, Chioto tied up there with Stevenson. Bolscher trying to poke it free. Now it comes, emerges free for Rippin. Played over to Hoffenmeyer. He got it out and down the ice as it drifts into Guelph territory. 7.35 to play, second period. Here's Schnarr, long shot, knocked down by Andre. The rebound comes right back to Schnarr as he's taken in by Hoffenmeyer. Chioto. 67s clear the zone. It's brought in by Chemilevsky. Cutting to the middle. Low shot off the pad of Popovich. Cody Clark tried to drop it right to Stevenson. And here comes Guelph. It's Liam Howell. Phillips jumping in with the storm rush here. Drop pass. Chemilevsky. Liam Clark will steer it out for Cody Clark. He's run into by Howell. And there's the physicality picking up just a little bit. Mahatya for Wilson. Turned over to Phillips. Now Howell bumped off the puck. Here comes Guelph and Suzuki putting on the brakes. Has it taken away into the quarter for Wilson. 67's under pressure. They just clear the puck down the ice. Long lead. Samarukov. Here is Isaac Radcliffe busting and got the shot away. Save made by Andre Reba. Coming. And we'll see how this plays out for Guelph. On the power play here. Yeah, Radcliffe right off the bench, stood on the blue line, the sleeper play. Got the long stretch pass from Samarukov. He came in, shot is turned aside by Andre, but a slash ensued, and in the 67s will sit out two minutes or less. As going off is Kevin Ball. And there you see the slash right at the Last moment after the shot. So 13, Guelph. 13.34, sorry, sorry Steve. The time of the penalty, the first power play of the frame for either club. 0 for 2 were the Storm and the first 1 for 2 were the 67. Jersey on the point for Guelph. Back across, Samarukov. Return feed, Jersey wide, fires off the arm of Andre. As that is picked up by Guelph in the corner. They roll it back to Samarukov on the point. Gets over to Nick Suzuki. Back to Samarukov, a drive over top of the net. 
Rebound, it's gathered in by Wilson who takes to the corner. Radcliffe and Whistle both in there trying to get it free now. Radcliffe has it for Guelph. Floats it out for Jersey. Back into Radcliffe, top of the circle. High slot, drifts one just wide. And Whistle sends it just over top of the goal. Suzuki in the corner, back to Enwistle. A minute 15 left in this man advantage for Guelph. Got some good momentum going here. Samarukov for Dersey. They exchange positions. Dersey finds Nick Suzuki now. Dropped back to Dersey. Over to Samarukov with that big shot. Sends across. Suzuki right in front. Radcliffe the deflection. Power play Guelph. 3 2 Guelph. Guelph with three second period goals. Two on the power play. Radcliffe with his 15th of the postseason. This goal at the 14.43 mark puts the storm up by a score of three to two. Nice patience, good puck control, and the patience is what paid off. They waited for the opportunity and they found Radcliffe in the slot for the redirect. And how about this, Dick Suzuki with that point will have 40 points in the OHL playoffs. Incredible. There you see Captain Clutch indeed. Ralph went in. So Isaac Radcliffe two second period goals has his team in the lead by one. Back out. Here's Lalonde. A shot. Knocked down by Andre. Loose puck. Camiso trying to jam it home. Ralph scores. Cedric Ralph. 4-2. electric as the Guelph score and have a two goal lead. 21 seconds after Radcliffe's power play goal to make it 4-3-2. Cedric Ralph jumps in, in off the scramble, scores his fourth of the fourth season to make it a 4-2 hockey game. Try, try, try again and they do as Cedric Ralph makes that one work for his fourth. OHL playoff goal of the postseason. There's no harder working guy. Everybody works hard in the storm, but this guy, small in stature, big in heart, Cedric Ralph, and he's there. He's not afraid to go into the dirty areas of the ice, and he bangs one home. Cedric Ralph, his fourth, makes it 4 2. You took the words right out of my mouth. Cedric Ralph, an incredibly hard working OHL player. There aren't many that will outwork him. Always comes to play and gives his best in every single game and shift. And he's rewarded there with his fourth OHL playoff goal. Under five minutes to play here in the second period as Stevenson hustling in for Guelph. Taken in the corner by by Wilson. Tied up there, loose puck. Gathered in by Schnarr. Continue to try to work the puck free. And Wilson kicked off there. Got it over just for ball. He'll roll it down the ice. Graham Clark trying to take the puck away from Gordieve. He'll leave it there for the Captain Radcliffe. Long shot. Cedric Andre will hold on and try to settle things down here as the Ottawa 67s look a little rattled. With 4 Here's 11 the left. announcement. So Camiso and Lalonde pick up the helpers on the goal by Cedric Ralph, his fourth playoff goal. Lalonde playing in his 92nd game of the season. That's got to be some kind of a record. It actually is the new team record by the Guelph Storm. The most games in one single season. Ralph Radcliffe out for Suzuki. Scores! Nick Suzuki makes it 5-2 on a feed from Radcliffe. 
the beat goes on. 14-43, Radcliffe makes it 3-2. 15-04, Ralph makes it 4-2. And at 15-57, it is Nick Suzuki who buries his 16th of the campaign postseason, that is, to make it a 5-2 hockey game. Well, with four unanswered in this middle frame, and we said they'd come out a different hockey club in the second period, and <laughs> have they ever done that? 4.03 left in this second period, and Guelph has a three goal lead here. Five to two. Changing the complexion of this game completely. And Wilson on the far side works back to Jersey. Low shots here today by Andre Radcliffe. Go to Saver Rukoff, a drive right on. Suzuki trying to center it back in front. Tied up by Hoffenmeyer. Rolled right, left side for Keating. Now, Kellerberg sends it past Samer Rukov. Jersey back for it, they'll whistle it down, ice and call. Well, six Suzuki with his 16th. Makes it 5-2. He has an assist on Ratcliffe's first goal that made it 3-2 on the power play. And Ratcliffe, two goals and a helper on the afternoon. Sorry, two helpers. Four-point afternoon for him. And the big players show up big time for the Storm in this second period. Gordiva drive. Getting a piece of that with the glove was in. Andre, a Storm trail 2-0 after one and have come back with five unanswered goals here in this second period to give themselves a three-goal lead. A hot check, hard hit there on Stevenson. Howell centers back through the slot. It comes out to Gordiva, winds, fires, blast. Knocked down a hot check, right in front, set wide there. By the score player who's taken down by Ball, that being Liam Howell. Ottawa trying to get something positive going here. Here's Cody Clark through the slot with the backhand. Doesn't get to anyone as Clark gets it back. Clark behind the net. Swept away by Gordiev. Torovchenko. Left for Gordiev. Rolled out to the point, but not out. Hoffenmeyer back around for Rippin. His long shot gloved by Popovich through some traffic. Well, let's take a look at this. Well, leads the total shot on goal at 30-17 to this point in the hockey game, 18-4 in this period, en route to this 5-2 lead and this four-goal outburst in the second frame. Draw back to Rippon on the point. And that is gloved by Anthony Popovich, who's looking rock solid here in the second frame. You know, you talk about, most times, we always talk about scoring depth. But in the game five, Ralph won in Ottawa, I cited defensive depth. Ottawa had nine players in the minus column and the plus minus. Guelph had zero. Scoring depth, defensive depth for the Storm in that game. Off the draw, Camiso battling there with Maximovic. He'll roll it to the near corner as Hanley gets over. Picked off by Chioto. Tried to drop it there for Holscher as the Storm will clear. And Torpchenko works back. Here he comes through the middle. Torpchenko, what a playoffs he's had. Continuing on, right into the slot, driving, knocked down by the goaltender, Andre, and now the whistle goes. Oh, well, there's going to be some kind of a penalty here. Yeah, for sure. As charging the net was big to uh, Alexei Toropchenko. As you said, he's had quite a series. It'll likely be against the storm for the uh, charging the net. That's interference call. And it's likely goaltender interference. Looks to be. So Toropchenko heads to the box. 2-0-1 left here in this second period. It's a good chance for Ottawa to try to get back to within two, trailing 5-2. 17.59, the time of this penalty and power play to the 
67s. Both clubs now with one opportunity on the power play. That can't be right. So face off in Guelph territory. Suzuki against Shemilevsky. Off the draw, Suzuki will clear it. Nope, it just, they'll say it stayed in. And here is Rossi taken down. There's going to be a penalty against Guelph in the Ottawa 67s will have a two-man advantage. This one to Suzuki. So a great chance here for Ottawa to get back in this game. And look at the penalty. Janowski against Camiso. Five on three, Ottawa. They win it. Keating back to Rossi. Feliber, return feed to Rossi, top of the circle. Out to Feliber, far side Chemilevsky. Down low, Chioto. Rossi to Feliber again. They play give and go. Chioto cruising back out. Into Chemilevsky off the arm of Popovich with the save. In the corner. And it's cleared down the ice by Sam Arukov. This is a long four, five on three. 121 left in that double man in the box. So big opportunity. Rossi. Chemilevsky. Feliber now. Chiodo. Back out to Chemilevsky. Shot scores. 5-3. Chemilevsky a power play goal. This is a big, big goal for the 67s. To cut this margin and at least put a bit of a brakes on the momentum that Storm had. The Storm had with four unanswered to open up this second period of play. Minute eight left in the period and 1-0-1-17 left in Suzuki's penalty, so they're still on the power play. Well, they still have a minute 17 left in the penalty to Suzuki to work with. 5-3. Ottawa end the period perhaps on the power play. Here we go. Chemilevsky for Rossi. He'll roll it in deep. Marcus Phillips gets to the puck. He can't get it past Hoffenmeyer. Swept across. Feliber. Wrist shot over top of the net. Bouncing puck and now Rossi gathers it and he'll drop to Chemilevsky. Chemilevsky. Feliber back to Hoffenmeyer. Low shot just drifts wide. He didn't miss by much on that one. 30 seconds left in the second period. Hoffenmeyer for Ottawa. And that's stripped away nicely by the captain, Radcliffe. In for Cedric Ralph. Storm shorthanded, killing off some valuable time here. Dying seconds of this second period, and that will do it. So Ottawa with a late goal, but Guelph strike big. In this second period, they've emerged with a two-goal lead, 5-3. to three. Yeah, they outshoot the 67s, 18-6 in the frame, and uh, skate away with a 5-3 lead. On the strength of two power play goals, but a four-goal outburst for them. And uh, just a strong, strong period. But we've got a huge, I mean huge, folks, 20 minutes coming ahead. There you see. Brought to you by GuelphStorm.com. The shots on goal, as Bill mentioned, 18-6 to six in that frame in favor of the Guelph Storm. And they have that 5-3 lead after two. You're watching Guelph Storm Hockey on Rogers TV and the OHL Action Pack, brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes.
Welcome back to the Sleeman Center here in the second intermission. An exciting one to say the least. 5-3, the storm lead over the Ottawa 67. Joining me now from Guelph is Liam Howe. Liam, uh, it's been a wild playoff run, so why not a wild period here? Maybe uh, you can put in the thoughts here. What happened there? I mean, obviously, uh, we started out the first down two. It's not really what we wanted, but I think we just thought, we, I don't know if we expected to score five goals that period, but I mean, it's, we won't complain. We just got to keep going in the third and lock it down. You know, yeah, a tough start for you guys here tonight. Was there a message after the first 20 to uh, kind of rally the troops or uh, maybe what was uh, said or not said? I think we just knew once we got one goal, uh, this crowd would erupt and we get the energy back. And I think once that happened, it, it went to exactly the plan. I mean, the momentum just flowed and I think we scored five goals. So it's a great period. You know, Liam, uh, I think there's a lot of guys that play with a lot of passion on this team but and really show it and uh, maybe has some high ups and downs. You seem a little more even keel here. Uh, how do you take all this excitement and just uh, not get too high and not get too low throughout the process? I think, you know what I mean, you just got to stay confident like in yourself and in the team. Like I know for myself, I just got to play my game and my line mates will help me out with that and good things will happen. So I think we just can't get too scared or too excited. Either we're down or we're up, we just got to play like we can and like, good things happen like you see out there. I know you guys try not to think what the next 20 minutes mean if you win the period, but uh, how do you just focus on the 20 minutes at hand and getting the job done? I think we just got to play for each other. Like This is our goal our, all year, and we're getting a chance to win the championship in front of our home fans who have been electric all playoffs and all year. So we got to just gotta bear down and play the, our best 20 minutes of the year here, and then we'll be champions. All right, thanks, Liam. Good luck. Thank you. Liam Howell of the Guelph Storm. Stay with us. we got more of the second intermission. This is Guelph Storm Hockey and Rogers TV brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. get a look at the J. Ross Robertson Cup awarded to the champions of the Ontario Hockey League and it may be presented in one more period or it may be presented tomorrow night. We're going to find out here very shortly. And Bill, this trophy is named after J. Ross Robertson, of course, who actually was the president of the Ontario Hockey Association from 1899 to 1905. For those that may wonder who J. Ross knew that. There you go. So I'll tell you a story about this. When I was teaching and the Guelph Platers won the, uh, the Memorial Cup a sister of Bill Loshaw, who played on the back end for the Storm, got four of the Storm players to bring the J. Ross Robertson Cup and the Memorial Cup to my school. It visited every classroom in the place, and uh, <laughs> it was quite a day at Priory Park Public School. Yeah, the interesting too, thing as well is there originally was three J. Ross Robertson Cups. There was one for junior level, intermediate, and a third for the senior level. So nice. this is the remaining one, and it's uh, awarded, of course, to the OHL champ. Bill Granger, just your thoughts on what you've seen through two periods. It was really a story of each each team dominating one frame. Exactly, and uh, it was the 67s who came out of the first 20 minutes with that 2 nothing lead. I thought Guelph was a little tight in the opening period. They got uh, uh, behind early on that long shot by Hoffenmeyer to open up the scoring, and I think that set them back on their heels a wee bit. Ottawa added it to it, added to it, I should say, as they come out of the frame leading 2 nothing. And we thought, yeah, Guelph is going to bounce back. They've been resilient, and we know about two two goal leads in hockey. And uh, Guelph really came out with abandon. They got uh, uh, a goal 59 seconds in, I believe, on the power play, on the uh, late uh, penalty to the 67s at the end of the first. And they came back and got another one. Ratcliffe, I believe, had it. But uh, a four-goal outburst made it a 4-2 hockey game before it was uh, 5-2, and then the late goal on the power play. Four, five on three for the 67s kind of stemmed that uh, bleeding a little bit and uh, they're back in the hockey game trailing by a pair Harry, heading into period three watching this team in the playoffs not a huge surprise to see it being the Isaac Radcliffe Nick Suzuki and whistle line that comes back and uh, gets them right back where they want to be well the old cliche your best players have to be your best players uh, captains are chosen for leadership uh, both on and off the ice and Isaac Ratcliffe is showing it on the ice this afternoon in game six with a pair of goals and a pair of assists as well on the afternoon to lead the way. That's what you have your captains do and uh, you, like you say your best players have to be your best players. What do the Ottawa 67s do from their point of view to, to, to pull this one out and get to game seven? Stay calm, carry on. That's the order of the day is uh, Get back to their game plan. Don't panic. You've got 20 minutes to go. You're only down by a pair. 
and they've been successful all year long in third periods. But uh, uh, that's you can't rest on what your past record is. You have to rest on what you can do heading into the next 20 minutes of play. They have to stay calm, get back to the game plan. What was successful for them in the first uh, uh, period was the really intense forecheck, forcing Guelph to turn the puck over, make quick decisions. And I've said all through these types of broadcasts that you force the opposition to make quick decisions with the puck. Sometimes they're wrong decisions. It forces turnovers, may force penalties, and uh, that's the story. That's what the 67s will have to do is press the storm on the forecheck, be fast on their uh, uh, on their uh, uh, transition hockey game, be quick through the neutral zone, and puck control, pressure on the puck in the Guelph end zone. It's going to be an interesting third period coming up. 5-3, to three, Guelph leading the Ottawa 67s through two. We'll be back with more on Guelph Storm Hockey and Rogers TV right after this. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Sleeman Center in Guelph. I'm Bill Granger along with Stephen Simmons with the play-by-play and your host, Trevor Pryor. 2-0 after the first for the 67s, but wow, six goals in the second period make it a 5-3 Guelph Storm lead. There's your board for the scoring summary right there. Two goals on the power play by Sam Arukov at uh, 59, 51 seconds and again Radcliffe at uh, 14.43 and finishing off with a Chemilevsky power play goal, five on three to round out the scoring. The shots on goal, look at the margin. Guelph held in the middle frame, 18 to six. Overall, 30-19. Let's take a look at some of the action in that second period. Physicality, big hit here on the Guelph Storms as uh, Phillips, and he took a little extra beating there, but he bounced back. He was back, and Ratcliffe with a great opportunity here turned aside, and that resulted in a slashing penalty. And Torupchenko ran the goalie here a little bit. He got called on the uh, goaltender interference and a power play. And uh, here is the set of goals, six of them. Samba Rukov with a huge blast, 51 seconds in on the power play, made it 2 nothing, and started the big pushback. Ratcliffe got the goal there, made it 2-2, his 14th of the campaign, and following up with a power play goal, making it 3-2, Ratcliffe his second consecutive goal at 14.43. Cedric Ralph right in the great position, down low, he bangs home a rebound with Andre down and out to make it 4-2. Nick Suzuki with his 16th made it a 5-2 hockey game. And then finally, five on three, Chemilevsky makes it a 5-3 hockey game late in the period at 18.52. Wow, what a period it was. A 5-3 lead heading into period three in game six of the Ontario Hockey League Championship Series. I'm going to take a pause. You all take a pause. We'll be back with more Wellstorm Hockey and Rogers TV. Brought to you by Reed's Heritage Homes. Welcome back. Just in time for third period action. As the puck is dropped to start this third frame, Guelph 5 the Ottawa 67s, three. Sam Rukoff in deep for Guelph. Looks that around all the way down the ice. Back five on five hockey. Guelph had eight seconds left on the Suzuki minor. Through the middle, here's Maximovich. Trying to work past. Picked off by Suzuki. Rolled down just out of the reach of Shiro as he'll hustle after it behind the Guelph net. Sam Rukoff. Trying to get away from Holscher. Work the puck over near side for Radcliffe. Big period for Radcliffe. Two goals and one helper in that second period as Ahatiak brings that in and plays on the back end. Wilson off the side of the mesh. Keating behind the net, trying to dig it free. He'll send it over to the far side, but Ahatiak is not there to be able to keep it in. Atyuk for Ottawa. Rings it in. Keating. Cycling back for Rossi in the corner. Back to Keating. He picked off by Guelph. Rossi keeping it in. And now it's shuttled out by Phillips. Rossi for Felibert. 
Long shot knocked away by Popovich. That sent off the glass and out of play off the stick of Marcus Phillips. The faceoff will remain in Guelph territory. No bigger 20 minutes of play for both of these clubs. Well, no bigger, uh, what, uh, 18 minutes and 31 seconds for these clubs. Ottawa trail by a pair heading into period number three. The Storm that time away from a big victory. Back to the point for Ball. Long shot, Hoffemeyer blocked there by Gordiev. Ball left side. Rolled back out of the reach by Graham Clark and Andre will play it from the corner there. Ottawa trying to get something positive going here. They got a late goal in the second to get back to within two. Here comes Guelph and Whistle. He's got Jersey with him, drops it for him. Jersey, return feed to Enwistle. The referee got a skate in the way of that. Gets some derision from the fans. Jemilewski can't get it by Radcliffe. Suzuki rolls it in. Ahatiak picked off by Radcliffe. As Wilson will play it back around to the far side for Ahatiak. Mitchell Holscher, the Alora Ontario native, just 15 minutes down the road with the puck. Can't get past the Guelph player, but some help coming from Ahatia. Ahatia steered in deep. Ottawa making changes. Chiodo trying to pressure down low. Camisa works to the wall. Chipped out by Cedric Ralph. Korobchenko trying to get on that puck, and it comes in just offside as Camisa was hustling in on that left wing side and was in a step ahead. Yeah, both sticks on the puck outside the blue line and streaking down the left side was Camiso for the offside and uh, time winds down three minutes off the clock and uh, both clubs, I thought Ottawa, good pressure on the, the puck in the Guelph end zone well, equally good on pressuring the puck carrier inside their defensive zone to uh, force the turnovers and exit of the zone. Keating for the Ottawa 67s. Drives that in. Feliber after it. Down low to Keating again. Trying to get away from Suzuki. Help coming from Feliber there. Demarukov works around on the wall, but it's kept in by Rippon. Low shot. And Anthony Popovich looking rock solid has it. Yeah, the uh, parting of the ways there is the lane. The shooting lane opened up for Popovich to see the play and the shot coming in. Made the easy stop to keep it at 5-3, 16-33. Left or 3-27 gone. And they'll drop it again. All five, Ottawa three. Controlled by Gordiev as he plays it around all the way down the ice. Back for it, Hoffenmeyer. Cycling there. Jack Quinn. Here's Cody Clark. Fed up the wing there. Jack Quinn trying to drive in. Works back, Hoffenmeyer. High slot. Knocked down by a golf stick. Powell, I believe, got a stick on that. More good shot blocks for the Storm, defensively sound. Good looking chance there by the 67s. Jemilewski. Floated to the corner here, Cody Clark at the half wall. Marcus Phillips gets it for Guelph, works to Gordiev. Lead pass Camiso. Guelph on the rush. Camiso driving wide there on Jack Quinn. Storm makes some changes. Kevin Ball, under pressure there from Ralph. Good pressure by Ralph right there. Bitten, outlets right side. Cleared in by Maximovic. Lalonde taken to the wall. Maximovic trying to work it free. Here's Torepchenko for Guelph. Right side for Ralph. He'll send it in and dart past his man. 
Trying to challenge Wilson for the puck. Maximovich. Over for Suzuki. And he'll roll it back into Ottawa territory. Here's Toropchenko. Toropchenko spins back. Plays it across for Dersey. Fed in there, but right to an Ottawa stick. And it's skated out by Rossi. Here's Nick Suzuki finding an opening. Moving in and shot it over top of the net. Close call for Suzuki in that one. Felliber picked off there by the captain, Radcliffe. Past the five-minute mark of this third period. Here's Samarukov jumping in. Tied up there by Rippin. Great Ripon. anticipation there by Samarukov stepping up to take that puck in. Gets it into the corner and ties up the, the play down in the far corner and eating up some valuable seconds off the clock down to 14-18 left. And Nick Suzuki, look at him jumping in here. Yells for the puck, gets the pass, and breaks in all alone, trying to go high glove. Not to be for Suzuki, as he was lucky for his 17th of the postseason. Ward Eve rolls it back behind the Ottawa net. At the half wall, they battle for it. Here's Howell for Guelph. Working away against Shemilevsky. As I've rolled through the neutral zone as Schnarr will come back. Fired in deep by Guelph as ball gets it far side. Gives to Chemileski, but Guelph keeps it in. Schnarr pressuring the puck there. Ties up ball, taken down. Chemileski back. Has a goal in this game. Worked ahead for Cody Clark. Trying to cut to the middle. Dropping nicely for ball. Fed across Hoffenmeyer, and he didn't get anything on that. He sent it well wide. As Cody Clark has it back into the neutral zone. He's right back in with it. Clark got it off of Gordiev, and that'll be set down the ice by the veteran Storm defenseman. Herrick under pressure there from Ralph. Storm keep it in. Good work there by Camiso. He's got it. Cycling there, looking for Ralph. Holscher works past Ralph, and now it comes to Keating, who will get it to the blue line and out. Played in by Maximovic. Loose puck rattles over for Jack Hanley. And the storm will clear the zone. Mahatyuk back. Lead pass, but Radcliffe will fire it right back at him. So Ahatchek will try it again. He gets to Felliber this time. Driving wide. Got the puck in deep, but Sam Rukoff is there. Over for Nick Suzuki. Now Radcliffe rolled into Ottawa territory, and they have it. Jersey. Rossi with Keating. Rossi dropping for Keating. Back to Rossi. Couldn't handle it, but center's in front, got it back. Storm on the puck, but now Hoffenmeyer will keep it in at the point, and there's a whistle. They're going to say a gloved hand pass. Fortunate for the Storm, as they just couldn't get the good stick on it to clear the zone. They had a couple of chances and failed to do so, and a gloved hand pass forces a face-off out into the neutral zone outside the Guelph. Blue line, 12.02 left. Well, 0 2 left here. Face off just outside the Guelph blue line. Kevin Ball emerges with the puck and he will hustle in against Gordiev as they collide behind the Guelph net. Ball has it for Ottawa. Back to Hoffenmeyer. Wrist shot redirected wide. Gordiev back for Guelph. Center ice area, that's Hoffenmeyer. Under pressure, rolls to the near wall. Storm worked back as they will reset. Marcus Phillips takes a look. Over for Gordiev. Here's Toropchenko on the rush. Good speed, Toropchenko. Nice toe drag, cutting right in. Toropchenko, what a chance. As he'll work back to Camiso and they'll cycle it back down low, but what a rush there by Toropchenko. Wilson. 
for Chemileski for Ottawa. Over to for Cody Clark. Lead pass. Fellaber trying to catch up with it there. Lalonde taken in hard. Wilson in the corner. Fed back through the slot. Here's a chance. Keating the shot. Knocked down and saved. Held by Anthony Popovich under pressure. And he comes up big for the Guelph Storm. Well, a Guelph player knocked down after the whistle right on top of Popovich and other Guelph personnel right there. And uh, you got to wonder whether the uh, after whistle antics there will be caught and uh, charged the penalty. And it looks as though it's, that's going to be the case. Feliber. Here's the big energetic rush by Torupchenko. Thought he lost the puck. Cut to his left for the net. Came up with the puck again. And here's the uh, pile up. And there goes uh, Ralph down at the hands of Feliber. So he's going. And it's a two-minute power play for the Storm right here. So the Storm will try to add to their lead. Right here on the power play. Off the draw to work back to Samarukov on the point. In for Nick Suzuki. Low shot, knocked down by Andre. Loose puck and he reaches out with the glove and corrals that for a faceoff. Well, it's uh, special teams on either side. A big, big task for them. For the Storm, they'd more love to uh, make it a three goal margin once again. For the 67s, they have to kill this one off to get within, well, eight minutes of play, eight and a bit, to uh, get back into the hockey game and cut this two-goal lead. Off the draw comes back out to Jersey. He gives to Samarukov, return feed, wrist shot, redirected over top of the net. It bounces to Nick Suzuki. He'll cycle it back down low for Radcliffe. Around to Jersey, but it's picked up there by Maximovic. Former Otter hustling in, trying to get a pass there. Taken in by Samarukov. And Whistle trying to get in there, but Andre will take no chances as it kind of bounced in on him. Yeah, Puck got up on its edge there as chasing it down was in Whistle. He had a man with him, but uh, not enough other men around and uh, gathering it in was Andre to force the stoppage and allow both clubs to get out there with fresh legs. 21-22 left in the power play for the Storm and the penalty to Feliber. Storm on the power play here with minute 18 to work with. Radcliffe, or Lalonde fires, steered away by Andre. Holscher for Ottawa. Works across for Kevin Ball. Short-handed, his shot just wide. Storms Torpchenko now. And across the line in there, he's offside as he went in ahead of the puck. You know, Ottawa doing little things after the whistle, a little shove there, a little nudge and so on. Happening in a couple of places, looking to get under the Storm's skin. But the Storm, self-disciplined, composed, put a little smile on their face and that just does as much to get under the 67's skin perhaps Nine forty-six left here in this third period Wall 5 Ottawa 3 53 seconds left in this man advantage for Guelph but they'll have to start from down by Anthony Popovich. So that's Samarukov for Guelph. Hard clear in. Eric Rippon gets there first. Loose puck along the wall. Storm get it back. Here's Jersey. Quickly across Samarukov. Top of the circle. Rishot scores! Dmitry Samarukov, his second of the game, makes it 6-3, a power play goal. Second of the game, second power play goal of the hockey game for Samarukov. He made it 2-1 early in the first or second, but his 10th of the postseason. 
That's a huge goal. 9.15 to go. Guelph with a three goal lead. Guelph with three power play goals this afternoon. Do you think he's excited? I think he so. is indeed. And he has good reason to be. He staked his, that's his 10th goal in the OHL playoffs for Sam Arukoff. What a contributor he's been as he continues to do it. Here's Keating for the 67. Over for Felliber. Can't get by Gordiev. Rossi trying to kick it to the corner. Storm will clear the zone. That by Stevenson. There's Liam Howell trying to bust in there against Hoffenmeyer. Another point for Nick Suzuki. Will his name in 8.36 be the and winner of the Wayne Gretzky trophy for most outstanding player will, in the playoffs. We'll find out some more hockey to go and Guelph takes a penalty here. And with that, we'll take a break. It's the Guelph Storm 6, the Ottawa 67s 3. You're watching the OHL final on Rogers TV. Welcome back to the Sleeman Center in Guelph where there's just 8.27 to play. Korupchenko in the box for a penalty that he just took. As there you see it. The Ottawa 67s, they are in dire need of a goal here. They're trailed by three. They do have a power play to work with. We'll see, let's how, see how it unfolds here. Set down the ice by Guelph. Cedric Andre will leave it there. And now he'll have to play it around to the near side for Maximovich. Kevin Ball for the 67s. Chioto trying to work back there. Rolled around to Maximovich on the point. Kevin Ball. Across for Clark. Good shot. Knocked down by Popovich. A close chance for Cody Clark. Ball keeping it in at the point. Back in for Cody Clark in the slot, and he sent it wide. Was looking to pass for Graham Clark, and now the extra man. Ottawa's pulled their goaltender with seven and change to play, and they know they need some goals. Fed in front, and Chemileski sent it wide to the open net. Here's a chance, Maximovich. Graham Clark back to Maximovich, wires it over top of the net. Chioto far side, Kevin Ball, 50 seconds to work on the power play. Maximovich again. Down for Graham Clark. Back out to Maximovich. Ball, long shot, knocked away by Popovich. The storm will clear it out. And down the ice, and that is going to go just wide of the empty net. With 7 one to play. 33 seconds left in this man advantage. Jemilevsky. Ranging in there. Plays around to Rossi, far side. Radcliffe trying to bust that one past his man, and he will. And it's going to roll just wide of the empty net. 14 seconds left in the man advantage. Chemileski again. Out for Felliber. Back in across the line. Drops for Cody Clark. In the corner, Felliber around for Marco Rossi. Offenmeyer kept it in for Guelph. The penalty has expired. And that continues to be empty for Ottawa. They know they have some work to do here. Here's Suzuki. Looking for the empty net. No, he misses it. And as a result, it'll be an icing call against Guelph. With 6-11 to play. Well, the Storm with a couple of, well, three cracks at the empty net. All going wide. A big carom off the boards was the first by Sam Arukov. Looking for another goal. But here's Ottawa. Pulling out all the stops. Centering pass. A good stick by Camiso. Sent that over the net or wide. And uh, good defensive play will save the game for sure. Storm on the puck, that's Marcus Phillips. Fed in, picked up by Hoffenmeyer. Out for a hot tip. Holscher, tried to cycle. 
Storm break that up. Gonna go past their blue line. Under six minutes to play, here's Liam Howell. Howell, low shot kicked away by Cedric Andre. Stevenson battling there with Holscher, tying things up in the corner, killing off some valuable time. Under five and a half to play, third period. Maximovich for Ottawa. Hanley wires it off the glass. Both looking for Sam Rukov, and he'll feed it out. And here is Nate Schnarr, busting in with Torepchenko, feeds it into him, and he couldn't beat Cedric Andre. As that is swept out by Rossi to center ice again. Great save there by Andre on that two-on-one, and great centering pass. Keating. Wardiv off the glass. Rip in. Trying to keep it in deep. Ottawa trying to work something out here. Back to the line they come. And here goes Andre to the bench again. Fellaber trying to center in front. Loose pockets collected by Camiso. Camiso looking for that empty net. He's got it. 7 3 4 and change the play. Camiso into the empty net. Dominic Camiso right into the empty net, his fourth of the OHL playoffs, and they'll put this one away for Guelph four and change the play. They have a four-goal lead and are going to win the OHL championship here this afternoon. Well, Camiso with his fourth of the, of the postseason. Good for him to get that because he's really been great defensively and has put a lot of pressure on the puck and the 67s. So he's deserving of a goal one way or the other. And uh, in spite of it being into an empty net, and uh, that seals the deal with 425 left. Phillips works ahead there, and whistle trying to poke it past his man. Back for it, Shemilevsky. Jack Phillips. Marcus Phillips clears it in across the line as Chamileski comes back for Ottawa. Suzuki battling at center ice for the loose puck. Ahatyuk can't get it past his man. Suzuki works back to Gordiev. Ahatyuk. Here's Holscher. Bumping there with Marcus Phillips. A roll back down the ice for Cedric Andre. Three and a half to play. Lalonde wrists one in. Andre mishandles that. Stevenson into a net. As Andre was out, and Stevenson makes it 8 3. Seven's a minute two after the empty netter by Camiso. Keegan Stevenson, pardon me. Stevenson with his third goal of the OHL playoffs. Make it eight to three right here. 3.23 left. Fed in by Guelph. Rippin. Good for Ewell. Cleared in deep. Shake it back for Guelph. Floating around looking for Torovchenko. Puck at neutral ice here. Cedric Ralph cutting to the middle, trying to battle against Quinn. They'll work it back. Storm look to kill off the rest of the time here. 2.47 to go before they have punched their ticket for the Memorial Cup. Celeber 
Through the middle to Keating. Roberts back. Mahatya fired back into the corner. Just over two minutes to play. Fellaber shoots it wide. Wilson keeping it in for Ottawa. Hnar has it. Here's Gogolev driving wide. Gogolev cutting to the middle. Poked away from him. Rolled in deep by Schnarr. And it's whistled down with 1.44 to play. A lot of players with points this afternoon for the Storm in this 8-3 lead with 1.44 left. And they're that far away from an Ontario Hockey League Championship trophy in the J. Ross Robertson Cup. So Fellaber's taken a two-minute minor here with 1.44 to play. Off the draw, back to Lalonde. Around in behind the net. Hoffenmeyer there. Lofting it out. Loved down by Cheka who gives to Lalonde. Cheka for Lalonde. Looking across for Roberts. They're offside. As Ball gives a whack to Roberts. Roberts doesn't do anything back. 123 to go. Control off the draw, Lalonde. Through the middle for Cedric Ralph. Gives to Gogolev. Fed back out to Cheka. Out to the line, Lalonde. Back to Cheka again. Storm on the power play here. Minute five left in the hockey game. Poked out there by Maximovich. And what an OHL career Kyle Maximovich has had with the Erie Otters and now the Ottawa 67s. A special player indeed. As it's sent across the line by Robertson, cleared in offside. And Daniel Jacob getting some time out there. Rode the pines for most of this hockey game. But uh, a move by George Burnett, the coach, gives him some ice time in this championship game six. seconds left in this one. And Robertson. And the Ottawa players throw the gloves at Wilson. Wilson's going to be sent to the dressing room. Yeah, these are 10 minute misconducts or whatever, but the uh, Ottawa still has got 59 seconds, so they'll play shorthanded for the remainder of this hockey game if there are no further infractions. So either the coaches or the referees will uh, settle down the cooler, or hotter heads, I should say. After all the nasty things that they're saying down there, and all the, <laughs> they'll all shake hands and make friends at the end. They will. Forty seconds to go. That is Gogolev. Back in for Lalonde. 
Cleared in by Guelph. Twenty-nine seconds to go here. seconds left. And there it is! A team of resilience, a team of destiny. The Guelph Storm are your 2018-19 OHL champs. The comeback kids do it again in fine style at home. The J. Ross Robertson Cup champs. Three huge comebacks in the final three series of the playoffs. The 12 score trailed 2 0 in each of the final three series, coming back from a 3 0 deficit to London, a 3 1 deficit to Saginaw, and a 2 0 deficit to the Ottawa 67s champions of the Eastern Conference. And boy, say all you want about Guelph, but you can't, uh, you've got to tip your hats to the 67s for the year they had and winning the championships on the east side. No team has ever trailed two to nothing in three different series and gone on to win let alone win the OHL championship. Incredible. The Guelph Storm, the comeback kids as they've been dubbed, and a moniker well earned. Wow. What a series this has been. What a team Guelph turned into at the trade deadline with the moves of George Burnett to bring in players to... Uh, make the difference, and make the difference they did. And they gelled quickly, made the difference, and won the Ontario Hockey League Championship, as well as the Wayne Gretzky Trophy for the championship of the Western Conference. Pictures say it all. George Burnett, his second OHL championship team, interestingly, both time. with Guelph. Yeah. And who did they beat the last day? The Ottawa 67s. An amazing season for the Guelph Storm. The pundits said they couldn't do it, that they wouldn't do it. They're down 3 0 to London. They come back and win four. Down three to one to Saginaw, they rally to win three straight. They're down two to nothing to the Ottawa 67s. They win four straight. Incredible what and kind what, of a run and, they've had. And of course, game five was the turning point where they took the lead. And the Stu Storm saluting their fans for their tremendous support that players in interviews throughout the series have noted how they've been all year long to the, the players and the team, and they're not shy to show their, their affection for their fans. And the coaches uh, offering their congratulations and... Uh, both ways, because there's two championship teams out there.
An amazing team, the Guelph Storm, with their fourth ever OHL championship. 1997-98, 2003-2004, 2013-2014, and now 2018-2019. presentation, of course, for the Wayne Gretzky 99 award and the J. Ross Robertson Cup. The Wayne Gretzky 99 award, of course, to the playoff MVP, and I don't think anyone else but Nick Suzuki can really get it. Yeah, but uh, nobody leaving this building anytime soon. So they'll stick around for the trophy presentations as uh, both teams line up for the traditional handshake. I love when this happens. And we're going to send it downstairs to Trevor Pryor, standing by with the storm captain, Isaac Radcliffe. Okay. Trev? Well, all right, Captain Isaac, I want to get your new swag here. You know, Isaac, we've talked to you throughout the playoffs, and you talked about how after everything you've been through the first few years here, not a lot of winning, that it was just an enjoyment to get late in the playoffs. You guys did it, though, with all the comebacks. You finally get here, OHL champions. Okay, uh, I don't know, can you put it into words right now? No, I can't. I mean, every memory the past four years, all the way from my first day in Guelph to now, has is, is really hit me right now. I mean, uh, all the work we put in, everything we've done this year. I mean, the resiliency from this team is unbelievable. None like I've ever seen before. I mean, I've never played on a team with this much skill, this much class, and this much character. So happy right now, and we're not done. You know, so much was done at the trade deadline. You guys were able to come together as a team and succeed through these playoffs. Uh, can you put into words how you're able to come together so quickly? No, again, no. It's, everything's coming at us right now. I think we're just so excited with this win today. I mean... The way we've come together in these short few months here is unbelievable. The guys have joined the team. I mean, they've shown nothing but class to this city, to, to our fans. I mean, I mean to themselves and in the locker room as well. So we're just so happy with this. You're going to Halifax. Imagine you haven't thought of that yet, but uh, what a trip. I imagine. How excited are you? So excited. we got to enjoy this, but we're not done yet. Obviously, Isaac, my last chance to talk to you. I just want to thank you because throughout those tough years, you always came to chat with us. When the games weren't going well, you always had something to say, and we appreciate that. Good luck in Halifax, and uh, go get ready to get your trophy. Thanks a lot, Trevor. I appreciate it. Bill, Steve, back to you. A, a picture of class, Isaac Radcliffe. Absolutely. Always, always uh, has been. And he, he's, he's one of those players who sees you, gives you the tip of the hat, talks, stop. He, he's always available to say hello and, you know, take time with you. And uh, as a hockey fan inside of me, uh, I really appreciate that too and uh, there's so many players like that that we've met over the years and Isaac uh, is uh, doing that and uh, what a kid he is and what a what a career he's going to have but like you said it's not over they've got uh, four wins to go they do in indeed Halifax. Wow. the Guelph Storm punching their ticket to the Memorial Cup in Halifax next week an incredible scene here from Paul. Well, it took five years to turn the ship around after the 2014 championship and uh, a finalist lost in uh, in uh, London in the Memorial Cup in the final. They'll uh, they'll do what they can in uh, Halifax, but uh, right now there's no denying this crew right here. At least they didn't go seven. They got an extra day's rest. Right? Well, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. It's all going to help. That's for sure. The fourth seed in the Western Conference is this year's OHL champs. It's not where you finish. It's how you finish. You're right. I've said that for a long time. And uh, they finished fourth, but they finished strong. 
Well, as you said, Bill, those acquisitions at the trade deadline. George Burnett rolling the dice, trading uh, lots of quality young players and draft picks, and it pays off in spades. He has his second ever OHL championship with those moves, helping uh, this Guelph Storm team to be the best they can be and now the OHL champs. Well, I've been just enjoying the sights. Like Isaac said, there's not much you can say. You're lost for words, and I'm just uh, soaking in all the views down there, the celebrations and so on, so let's take it in. Gretzky Trophy presentation will be made in just a few moments. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wayne Gretzky 99 Award is named in honor of Wayne Gretzky, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame and one of the league's most esteemed graduates. The award was created shortly after the great one announced his retirement from hockey in 1999 to honor the most valuable player in the OHL playoffs as selected by members of the media. For the presentation of the Wayne Gretzky 99 Award and the J. Ross Robertson Cup, please welcome the Commissioner of the Ontario Hockey League, Mr. David Branch. Thank you very much. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to present the MVP award to this year's recipient, setting a franchise record of 42 playoff points, Nick Suzuki. The 99 trophy, you've got some interesting numerical oddities. I, I do. So Nick Suzuki, of course, number nine for Guelph. In 2014, when Guelph won, it was number nine, Robbie Fabry, who was the Wayne Gretzky trophy winner. And in 2004, it was number nine, Marty St. Pierre was the Wayne Gretzky trophy winner. So number nine has dominated that trophy for the Guelph Storm. Hark it back to Brian Wilsey's comment. He said he won the championship. What a and what a great he never season. won I'm since. Sure you all Here it is for the Guelph Storm. We should acknowledge the great effort, the great season of the Ottawa 67s. This is always such a special occasion, and, and, and what really punctuates it here, uh, so many factors, starting with the incredible support that you as fans in the city of Guelph gave the storm and all playoffs. <laughs> to see the alumni here, Andrew Long, Matt Hotchkiss, many, many more, it just shows you what the storm franchise in the city of Guelph mean to these young people. So congratulations to all of you. A model franchise starts at the top. To Rick and Barb Gates, Rick Hoyle, Scott Walker, John Healy, and many others, quite frankly. I can't thank you enough for what you do for the young people here and making our game so special to the parents, to the billets, uh, to everyone involved with the storm, our heartfelt thanks, and let's have fun in Halifax. I would like to call upon Isaac Ratcliffe. Isaac.
the Guelph Storm, your 2019 J. Ross Robertson Cup as Isaac Ratcliffe takes a turn to sport the, uh, the trophy awarded to the OHL champs around. And sharing the moment with the fans here at Guelph, and they sure appreciate it. And every one of those guys will take a tour with it and get their mitts on a hard fought trophy win. Jack Hanley. Dom Camiso. Game off-season trade. What a find he was and uh, a tenacious player. A lot of heart in Dom Camiso. And Sean Dersey from Owen Sound. Points off the back end. Huge. Huge player for the store. Let's send it down to Trevor Priory standing by with head coach and GM George Burnett. Trev? Well, thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, head coach, GM George Burnett. Coach, first of all, today's game, a wild one here. Not the start you wanted, but then your offense took over. I think the resiliency of this team won it. Uh, thoughts on today's clinching game? Well, I, I thought we were a little nervous, uh, a little, little bumps, a few bumps in the road early. We got some breaks, we got a bunch of goals. We played the way we can in the second period, and uh, nice to finally come out on top. They had their great chances, but it wasn't an 8-3 hockey game, but we'll take it. I talked to Brian Wilsey earlier today from the 1998 team, and he said we didn't have much adversity. They had a pretty good, solid team there. This team, obviously, we know the comebacks in the other series. Maybe just speak to uh, the resiliency they showed to get here. Well, the, the Phase 7 games where you're eliminated, uh, pretty special group. They never lost their poise and their focus, and, and uh, tonight's the result. Uh, you know, this team, you had to make a decision around the trade deadline just before it that you, you believed in this core and you believed in the guys. And if you brought in some of the big players, uh, you can make a run. Tell us through that decision process a few months back. Well, we, we didn't plan on making as many moves as we did. It worked out that way. We're happy that we did. It uh, has a lot to do with uh, the leadership that we brought in to support Raddy and Snarzy and Sammy. Yeah, pretty pretty great, group, great group of kids. And, and I know we're not finished yet. We're looking for one more. Lastly, uh, you know, uh, we know the core guys did really well, but our, the import players, Sam Rukov, Torpchenko, took it to a whole new level. Maybe just thoughts on them. Well, they're special guys, and uh, uh, they're difference makers every night for us, and they've been outstanding in the playoffs. Thanks a lot, Coach. Congratulations. Head Coach George Burnett, Steve, will send it back up to you. Thank you very much, Trevor Pryor. And, uh, yeah, what a what an incredible scene we have here at the Sleeman Center. As you see, Federer Gordiev uh, with his turn with the cup, and uh, Bill Granger... It doesn't come around too often, the Guelph Storm with just their fourth ever OHL championship no, season. No, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, we, we've been here for 18 years, Steve, and uh, it's our first kick at uh, bringing the accounts of the championship series and deciding game. And, boy, what a thrill it uh, is for all of us with Rogers to be here for this occasion. And, uh, yeah. It's our little piece of the pie, I guess, but uh, nothing compared to what these players down as Nick Suzuki, Suzuki hoists the trophy and salute to the crowd. What an incredible OHL playoffs he had. And, uh, you know, I think Nick Suzuki, everyone thought he was a great player around the league when he played for the Own Sound Attack, but uh, with the spotlight shone on him so bright, he delivered and uh, showed yeah, just how and, amazing a player he is. And great players rise to the occasion. And all of those trade members and the, the team that was here before the trades all rose to the occasion that resulted in this championship for the Storm. And speaking of Nick Suzuki, he's standing by with Trevor Pryor. Trev? Here we go. Nick, uh, MVP, obviously. An unbelievable run for you. You know talk about it just talk about the run this team made and, and you elevated your game obviously yeah the run was unbelievable uh, being down in all these series coming back uh, just everyone working uh, this goal and uh, to finally have it happen is unbelievable you know I can imagine an emotional time midway through the season you and several of your teammates from Owen Sound it's the only team you knew in the Ontario hockey League. you come to Guelph you gel quickly and you go on this maybe take us through that transition coming here yeah the transition was real smooth uh just coming in this group was amazing to us and uh being so close and uh yeah it's probably the closest team i've ever been a part of yeah 
Have you thought about Halifax yet? Not yet, but uh, we're going to start thinking about it soon, but we're going to enjoy this one. All right, enjoy it. Thanks, uh, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, Trevor, as Nick Suzuki. Uh, uh, certainly a uh, difference maker with a capital D, without absolutely. a question. What a, yeah. The Montreal Canadiens have to be absolutely thrilled to have him in the fold as uh, one of their top prospects. Top players for each team always get a lot, lot of uh, attention from the opposition. They're carded closely. They take physical abuse. Nick Suzuki, salute him for his tenacity, certainly his skill, but his ability to rise above all the physical abuse he may or may not have, may not have taken. He just picks up himself up, dusts himself off, turns the other cheek, all of those cliche things, and he gets right back into the hockey game. He doesn't get pulled into retaliation or anything like that. Nobody's getting under his skin, and uh, he's certainly in control of himself at all times. Very well-disciplined hockey player. Let's send it back down to Trevor Pryor, standing by with Cedric Ralph. Trev? Here we go. Go ahead. Join me now, Cedric Ralph. Cedric, you know, we talked to Isaac and Nate Schnarr, but you're part of that core that's been here through the tough times, now the great times. Maybe just talk about this playoff run for you. Uh, it just shows the amount of character and the resiliency we have in this group uh, through this whole series. Yes, baby! Yeah, my little chick. Uh, Cedric! And, uh, yeah, just the group of guys we had. I mean, I think a big uh, big thing we have is uh, we've always focused. We've always, uh, we've never got down on ourselves, always believed, and uh, the belief in our guys are a big key. You know, a few years ago when this team was struggling and rebuilding, I mean, did it ever seem it was going to get better? Uh, at times, no, at times, yes. I mean, uh, when you're in a rebuilding stage, things like that are going to happen. But, again, you just got to believe in the group of guys you got. And, again, with Schnarzi and Roddy being here for four years, it's pretty special to, to win this with them. You know, I know the trade deadline, a good buddy in line made yours, Barrett, went to Owen Sound, Barrett Kerwin. Uh, imagine you stay in touch with him and just uh, give your thoughts on the, the, the business of the sport and what you guys have to go through. Uh, I mean, things happen. Uh, you got a, you, you got a great opportunity down in Owen Sound. Uh, it's going to do wonders for him, I believe him. And uh, keep in touch. Send me some motivation before the game. So, uh, right. yeah. Cedric, go enjoy the room with your teammates. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, Trevor Pryor. It's certainly, as we talked about during the broadcast, Bill, uh, Cedric Rolfe, uh, he gives 100% every single shift, every single second he's on the ice. Uh, he probably wanted to contribute a little more offensively, but he always brought it every night in the he playoffs. Yeah. What it is for him, an 8-3 victory, but his fourth goal made it a 4-2 hockey game. He earns very well, deservedly, too, the game-winning goal for the Guelph Storm to solidify this uh, championship and uh, good on him a swell kid as well and uh, yeah there they are posing with the the picture down below Those aren't fans out there. There are parents and billets and everybody else associated with the players. Ownership, everybody. Bill, uh, before we go, just some final thoughts here on uh, this edition of the Guelph Storm. Pretty well, incredible. It sure has been. Uh, we waited five years for the rebuild, and it's culminated with this OHL championship that we've talked about all afternoon and uh, since post game, actually. Uh, yeah, it's a thrill for us. and. Uh, it uh, culminates our 18th season together. Trevor's been here for 12, I believe. And uh, yeah, another team, but uh, boy, oh boy, uh, we've had a thrill, haven't we? And uh, uh, working together for this length of time and having a couple of championships, Steve, uh, to show for it as uh, broadcasters, it's pretty nice, pretty nice and uh, privileged position to be in uh, for us. It's a lot of fun, and uh, when you get to know these young people and uh, understand what it takes to uh, the price that they have to pay to uh, to win and to get to this level and, and to you know accomplish what they've accomplished here, it's yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, I, I I can't salute them and enough and say find the words uh, to to express the admiration that we have for them. 
and uh, thank them for the times, for the, the little hellos, uh, the stops at the malls to say hi and have a discussion or in the corridors of the Sleeman Center. It's just awesome. It is indeed as you get a look at the scene here where the Guelph Storm have just won the OHL championship and we'll send it downstairs to uh, Trevor Pryor standing by with Rick Rates, the uh, owner and governor of the Guelph Storm. Trev? Thanks a lot, Steve. With the governor of the Guelph Storm, Rick Gates. Rick, congratulations on your organization. It's fourth OHL title. Uh, what a ride. The season, the playoffs, tonight, it, uh, unbelievable. I don't know uh, where, where your emotions are right now, but uh, take us through today. Well, honestly, I couldn't let myself get to the end of this thing because there were so many roadblocks in front of us. And, you know, I just have to, I have to just compliments to the staff. You know, George and his staff did a great job. And that group of players, the most resilient group of players, perhaps in the history of the league, I, they'll be talking about this team for a long time. Hopefully we're not done, but this was a one heck of a ride to get to here for sure. You know, it, just from a fan perspective, a bit controversial, the trade deadline by by making the moves they did to say, we got the core, let's go for it. But obviously the right decision, um, uh, not sure what the organization was thinking at the time, but uh, obviously the right call. Well, you know, at the trade deadline, we only had nine losses. We were a pretty good team at the trade deadline. It tied a few too many, yeah. but we had a good group, a core group, and yeah. it was hard to break it up, you know, where we were sitting. So we made a decision yeah. to add, and boy, did we add some high character guys. Yeah. What, I'm, I'm a little speechless, but yeah. what, what a run, Trevor. Yeah. You know, um, I know the CHL standings don't mean a lot internally to teams, but it's a it's a fun thing for fans. But this team really never got the recognition all season long, even when it started to go on runs, never gotten that top 10 rating. And here they are, OHL champions. I guess it, it speaks more to what you already alluded to, but uh, the way this team just said, we're going to take it. Yeah, we're a little bit of a stepchild for sure. But, uh, you know, what I will say in the back half of the season, to the playoffs, to the second round, I don't think we had fewer than four guys out of the lineup and, and five or six most nights so we really didn't get to see our guys and I got to do a shout out for Cam Hillis. Cam, uh, you know, he was one of our leaders on the ice, one of our best players. He led the team through a lot of this injury recovery and uh, I, I know he would have been thrilled to be out there but he played a bigger role than people know tonight. I imagine you got a lot of planning to do right now but uh, getting ready for Halifax. Um, just thoughts on the team heading out there for another Memorial Cup try. Well, it's our sixth trip, as you know, and we've we've come close several times. A little special for me, it's my hometown. I couldn't let myself get to the end of this thing to go back home for this, but uh, we'll be ready. We're going to go and we'll be ready to play. Once again, congratulations, and please go enjoy this with your team. Thanks, Trevor. Okay. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bill, Steve. There you have it, Rick Gates, the... Uh, governor and uh, part owner of the Guelph Storm and I didn't realize he's a Halifax no, native he gets either. to go home that's cool no. it's gonna be a neat story for him and before we forget there are actually three stars they did not no <laughs> yeah. uh, announce and them. who were they Bill but uh, number three star is Nick Suzuki and for him a goal and two assists I believe and uh, second star Captain Isaac Ratcliffe with uh, two and two and Dimitri Samarukov with a huge game two goals two assists points off the back end always bonus but boy they were huge goals it got the storm on the board his first on the power play to make it 2-1 and then he scored late in the game to make it a 6-3 uh, uh, score at 10:45 of the third period to really put it out of touch again on the power play his ninth and tenth goals of the postseason what a series what a game Dmitry Sabarukov have. And boy, you talk about Suzuki and the Montreal Canadiens. The Edmonton Oilers are licking their chops to get this guy in their lineup. No question about it. Uh, also want to say a, a huge thank you to all of our Rogers TV yep. volunteers who do a wonderful job of bringing this uh, OHL hockey to you. Our Guelph Storm crew work extremely hard. And, uh, you know, they do yeoman's work throughout the entire season. And we wanted to say a thank you to them for uh, working with Bill, myself, and Trevor, and we really appreciate everything that they do to uh, to make things go smooth and make us look good on camera. They and, sure uh, do, and uh, total fun. Total fun, and inside of us, Steve, there's a little, there are little boy hockey fans. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, 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 it's uh, uh, like I say, it's fun, totally enjoyable, but I, I'm going to repeat myself how lucky we are to be here 
privileged positions we hold down in the Rogers family to be able to bring this to the fans. And, uh, well, you got to count your blessings for being in the position and uh, the stars aligning that brought you and me together 18 years ago to uh, culminate this way and uh, onward we go after this year. Final score, the Guelph Storm 8-3 victors over the Ottawa 67s. They win the OHL championship in six games on home ice. They have punched their ticket to the 2019 Memorial Cup in Halifax next week. For Bill Granger, Trevor Pryor, all our Rogers TV crew, I'm Stephen Simmons saying good luck to the Guelph Storm in the Memorial Cup, and we'll see you next year right here on Rogers TV.